I am sure sports. You know me there, yeah. I'm coach to coach representing. I mean, I said this is right, just representing for all my You don't know, come get the sports over here from near and far. Boy, 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 boy. Me say, I am sure sports, one thing me sure about. When me say sure, that me, me not doubt. Come get your sports, get it over here. Come subscribe, repost and share. I am sure sports, one thing me sure about. When me say sure, that me, me not doubt. Come get your sports, get it over here. Come subscribe, repost and share. Yeah, share. If me not sure, that me, me not say it. No who score, that me, me not say it. Never know the game play, that me, me not say it. If me never seen a game, me not know who play. For your sports news, better come over, yes, sir. For your soccer news, then come over, yes, sir. If you don't love sports, still come over, yes, for the day, don't you want to love over your yes, So, so, when it comes on to behavior concerning football, Jamaica is, is decent. I am sure that if we can get all of these things done, second place by the end of April, it gives us enough time before the World Cup campaign. Not afraid of no Brazil or no Argentina with these crap of players. We are good enough. Remember to like, subscribe, 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 share. Listen, comment. Let me know what your thoughts are. Trick Nick Jerk Marinade gives your meats and vegetables authentic Jamaican jerk flavor. The spices are directly from Jamaica. Spices like jerk seasoning, allspice, scotch bonnet pepper, fresh scallions, thyme, ginger, and garlic. The key ingredients to a great jerk marinade. 0% sugar and low in sodium. You want to try it? Made up of 18 Jamaican herbs and spices. Add delicious, bold flavor to your next grilling experience. Flavoring sauce, a marinade, basting, condiment, or topping. Trick Nick Jerk Barbecue Sauce. That sport for the best authentic sportswear. You check Winter Sports when you want the best authentic sportswear. Winter Sport. Full change advertising. And for who out the numbers, remember, no easy laugh, no problem. Some sportswear for tech notes. Them full of dreams and whoops. Then why them come a sell rope? When there is only one, yeah, there is only one goat. And that's a Wilson, yeah, that's a Wilson, yeah, that's a Wilson sports. Yeah, ball boots, ball tops, ball shots, shing yard, ball socks. Them kind of drip you quick for make your ex call back. Lick a pick me some boots and ball out. I want that. My Nike ticket pretty, I'm a need a salt block. Dribble down your field, grip and feel. I can't drop, slight tackle all. I want a team and all this snap up. Why? Because I'm riding supper. All right, good morning. Welcome to I Am Sure Sports. I am your host, Manningsman. How are you doing, people? Hope you're having a fantastic start to this new day and this new morning. Yes, indeed. It has been a while since we have been around these blocks. In fact, uh, it the last time we were here, it was Thursday. And today is Monday, so there's a few days that we didn't have a show. But we know this is YouTube, so you have a lot of things to keep you occupied. All right, but welcome to the platform again. It's going to be a big one. I am asking you, as usual, just to do a few things for us. If this is your first time on the platform, as usual, we ask you to subscribe. To the platform that's very simple you just um close the tabs and you see that subscribe button you press it it changes color you know you're subscribed and you're on all right 
bam that's number one number two make sure you hit the like button right it's important that at the start of the video you hit the like button the moment you begin to do that it affects the algorithms of other video it means that more people more people get tuned in and tuned um uh in to watch and they come on and that just helps with the movement of the video so you go ahead and you do that all right the third thing you can do is that you can share the content with others so they can be a part of the i am sure brand and the i am sure uh family i am very sure that you want them to be a part of it all right as usual i want to take time out to welcome some of the very loyal subscribers who are here and members of the i am sure sports brand um they support the channel um and we don't have a lot to offer so really and truly our subscribers they they give up more to us than we give to them by watching and all of that right and so every now and then we 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 have been saying that those who are members, there are certain things that are coming up that they will benefit from. But outside of that, we believe it's a privilege that that we share with some of the people who are loyal to the channel when we make them like moderators. And so we expect them to operate in a certain decorum as they do those duties. So again, um, yeah, you know, we, we keep on doing stuff outside of the content because we believe that if we do that, it will... It will just let you know indeed that you're a part of the I Am Sure brand and the I Am Sure family. Just want to say a happy belated birthday to Reggae Boy. I'm Deshaun Beckford. He celebrated his birthday yesterday. So big up yourself, um, Mr. Beckford, wherever you are today. Hope you had a wonderful day yesterday. Want to say a big welcome to Jason. Jason is in the chat. We also see Dino, Demo. Um, KW Media is here. TY, I think that's Tyrone, is here. As usual, we have a uh, fresh god who is in the building. Uh, we see uh, Gunnar's boss. We see that the, the lesser Stennett is also here. Duklan, right? You understand me? Um, where is Arsenal? Rory, 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 big up yourself, you know. <laughs> big up yourself, you know, Rory. Yeah, bless up yourself. Yeah, that's that. Bit. Jason Guna is also here. Hey, look at that. I see Jew uh, Ross, a.k.a. Jew Forty. Trump Deck is here. Yeah, <laughs> you understand me. So big up to everyone who has tuned in we have a lot to cover today and so we're going to get into some of our content now i know some of you normally you support the channel on a super friday by giving super stickers and super chats but for reason and um, beyond our control we were unable to be on 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 friday so if you were looking out for us you didn't see us you can still do that you can make a contribution to the channel today don't let the day um being Friday, stop you from doing that. So whatever you had planned on doing on Friday, you can do it uh, today um, and make a donation to that channel. I said, Chad, big up yourself. <laughs> uh, and, and Coach Menzi, <laughs> who is at the coach's desk, bless up, bless up yourself. Dwight, uh, bless up yourself as well. All right, uh, let's begin. At the beginning, you understand me, it's very important that we begin at the beginning and not in the middle, you understand me, of the whole thing. Yesterday was a dramatic game, also a very traumatic day for many. Uh, <laughs> I know that some persons may be struggling to cope given the results yesterday in the Premier League. Would love to hear from people like Flavor Max today. Would love to hear from people like Demo today. I was very coy having watched it, you know, not, not watched the game because, you know, I had church, but having seen Liverpool, um, the result of the Liverpool game, I was very coy in terms of my response because I know City won, Liverpool lost, and in this league, Almost anything is possible. So while I really wanted Arsenal to win the game, 
I, I was not surprised that they suffered defeat. Like, I, I was not surprised. Not surprised because I kind of felt like Liverpool having lost, City winning, um, it is it, it would have been a problem for Arsenal. I just kind of had that sense. And also because Aston Villa defeated Arsenal in the first game. I also realized that Unai Emery, having struggled with how he played, has been slowly changing. Every time he plays against the big teams, he changes his playing style. All right? And, um, and that worked for him. So, um, so let me just give you my take on things, right? Let me just give you my take, and then you can call in and give your own opinion on what happened yesterday. I will speak about my team, Arsenal. Very disappointed in the result of that game. Very, very disappointed in the result of that game, right? I think we had the game to win, and um, uh, we could have won the game, but I think like uh, Mikel Arteta um, made some errors. So let me begin. Mikel Arteta has been playing Kai Havertz in the last 10, since the start of the year, Kai Havertz's primary position at Arsenal has been in the role of a striker. He has proven to be effective, way more efficient in that position. In fact, the Arsenal team creates more opportunity when Gabriel Jesus is on Arsenal's bench. The Arsenal team plays better defensively when Alexandra Zivchenko is on Arsenal's bench. Arsenal team attacks better down the left when Martinelli starts. All right? These are just straight-up facts. So I cannot understand that coming into a game where you started Kai Havertz in the first game, you started Gabriel Jesus in the first game against Aston Villa, and you lost the game. Why would you come back? You started Zivchenko and Bailey was giving him a warm time in the game at Villa Park. Why would you come back in the second leg and put those same players on the field at the start of the game? So having seen the team that was starting the game, I immediately knew that Mikel Arteta went back to his nonsense. The nonsense that says to him, that Gabriel Jesus, when fit, must start. Gabriel Jesus is one of the downfall of the Brazil team. He is not a good he, He's not a center forward. He's not, no, but he's not a center forward. And they need to redefine this game. He's not worth, Gabriel Jesus is not worth $20 million. He's not good. He's always injured no matter what pain he's under. He doesn't score enough goals. He doesn't create enough opportunities. <coughs> he's not good in the air. I mean, he's he's he has some good one-on-one -on -one skills, and that is it. So if you're gonna play him and Kai Havertz, play him on the wing and play Kai Havertz at the start. They had Kanza playing right back, right back. That's when they need Martinelli. As good as Trussard is, Trussard is not the best. Trussard doesn't play well when he starts. Every time he comes on, he makes an impact in the game. He must come off the bench. He's not a starter, especially against the better teams. He got some breakaways, and we, we have seen it in previous game. Man get breakaway. He doesn't have the pace, but he's a very clinical goal scorer. So bring him on. Start Martinelli to put your opponent on the back foot. Put Kai Havertz in the position that you have been playing him. And start Jorginho and Declan Rice. This madness. The man pulled up the entire team to facilitate Gabriel Jesus. He keeps on. 
The team playing so well with 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 um Jakob Kior. Right? At left back. All of a sudden, this Zivchenko guy always giving away the ball because he believes he's a midfielder. This inverted thing. He doesn't play left back. Do you want my glasses to, to see Mikel Arteta? You want them? Well, package them. Like, what are people? Give me a second. Go and package these and send them to the Emirates. You know what? Better yet, I need to fire you. That's what I need to do. I was going to send him my glasses, but I think I need to get him fired. Man need to be fired. I, I don't understand. No way. If Kai Havertz is not playing as a number nine, the man should not be in the Arsenal starting 11. That's the only position he's supposed to play. If he's not playing that, put him on the bench. If Gabriel Jesus is not playing out wide, take him off the field. Zivchenko wants to play midfield. He doesn't want to defend. Man, they make Leon Bailey score. Top in at the back post. Hmm? Joe coach. This is a Joe coach. Joke. Joke coach. This is a big joke coaching. Joke coaching. Joke coaching. If Kai Havertz not playing as a number nine, Kai Havertz should not be in the Arsenal starting 11. Simple. Simple as that. You start a center forward or you, you, you don't play. What reason would you have to put Kai Havertz and Martin Odegaard with Declan Rice when Jorginho has been stabilizing the defense? Stabilizing the defense for so many games. You play the same thing in the first game against Villa. Every game that Arsenal has lost, do you know, people, that this is the same way Arteta set up the team in the games that Arsenal has lost? This man, this man, I lose his mind. I'm talking in the Premier League. The games in the Premier League, this nonsense where Kai Havertz playing midfield and, and Gabriel Jesus play forward. How many goal man score for Brazil? Madness. I were the manager for him long time. Coachless team I finished the season with. All if we take off the glasses, we could have seen that. Say Gabriel Jesus, no fear starting an Arsenal team right now. Man, no good. And nobody can tell me say name now. Gabriel Jesus. In a name, no Gab a Jesus. A Jesus. Man already. That man should never put on Brazil jersey. Him no good. Him no ready. A man flop like a floppy disk yesterday. I'm tell you that people. Yeah, but, but Jason Gona, the reason why I have Gabriel Jesus is part of it because 
Gabriel Jesus is playing the position that Kai Havertz plays. Because I am saying Kai Havertz should start in a GS Guna, but Kai Havertz must start as the center forward. Yeah, but hey, remember, you know, Gabriel Jesus came on against Brian Munich. Came on. He came on in a Jason. So I am fine with him coming on. I am not okay with him starting as a center forward. I said the one demo in here laughing and cat cat cat. I said the one in your demo carrying on. Demo, you must not just be easy, you know, you must easy. You hear that? Hold that 14 minutes. You fierce demo. <laughs> you need to come and tell me. You demo, you need to come and tell me. Come and tell me, demo, if if it is your A team. <laughs> yeah, but him, him, him in here a laugh. Him in here a laugh. A laugh like say. <laughs> in here a laugh. Brother, um, Scott, you can you can say talk where you want to talk. You can call him. What chance Arsenal miss? Bridgen. Kai Havertz to start. The wrong team started the game. Trussard must come off the bench. Demo, more, more, talk to you, Demo. As a yourself, I, <laughs> Demo, as a yourself, as a yourself, Demo, as a yourself, <laughs> that may I tell you, just as a yourself, as a yourself, Demo, oh, as a yourself. Because the whole of we are seeing at the same boat, me, you are Manchester United. <laughs> Yo, yo, Mr. Vex, yes, you star. Okay, you. Welcome to I Am Sure Sports. This is Manning's man. Good afternoon, boss, <laughs> and good afternoon to you in the chat. <laughs> I, I, just, I just wanted you to know why, why was the Arsenal segment so sharp? And why is it that you don't want me to laugh seeing my, um, my rivals lose? I laugh at all my rivals lose. I laugh at Manchester United when they lose. I laugh at Manchester City when they lose. What is so special about Arsenal that making a laugh? Okay, because Ar on the day that Arsenal lost, Liverpool lost. Okay. But, but why that to stop me from laughing at Arsenal? I don't, I don't understand. Why do why why both things can but, happen? But I'm not laughing. At, I'm, I'm not I'm not know? laughing at Liverpool because my team lost too. So why should I laugh at Liverpool? Yeah, you know the same thing, boss. Me can laugh. Explain. It was very funny. Explain to me. Because Arsenal fans and Liverpool lost, they were laughing at Liverpool. And they never wait for it and relax themselves. And never know say when they might dig a grave, they might dig two. So, so let me a laugh. Okay, so fine. Let me ask you a question. Was it your A okay. team or your B team that played against Crystal Palace? Oh, we, 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 that was the A team <laughs> yesterday. You saw those players coming back? You finally, I want to admit it now. No, I'm asking you a question. I'm not admitting anything. I'm asking. I'm asking you a question. I'm not admitting anything. Which team started the game? Oh, make, make your point. Explain to us what happened in Liverpool. Me just talk about my Arsenal thing. So you are the Liverpool man. Do you, do you do you agree that that was the A team yesterday? Because we had a totally different conversation. You saw Conor Bradley coming at right back yesterday. You saw Robertson coming in at left back yesterday. You saw Salah coming back in the team. You saw Diaz coming back in the team. So we can we can flash back to the last time I called versus Atalanta. And we can you can just backtrack and say, oh, you know, say did right team on if your 18 start the game. And we can move on. Oh, so what did Darwin Nunes do yesterday to cost you the game? No, 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 no. Just just do that before. No, 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 no. I'm not moving on. No A team. No A team, nothing. Because you're still lost. Okay. The end result of the game is still the same. So there is no guarantee. Yeah, that, there is no guarantee. If you had played those players against Atalanta, you'd have won. 
because you play them no, against no, no, Crystal no. Palace. No, you play them against Crystal yeah. Palace. And as far as I am concerned, Atalanta is a better team than Crystal Palace. And you lost. Okay. Okay, but we're arguing two different things. Here. No, no, no. Nobody we're arguing, arguing results. Means. We're we arguing the end. Not we're not arguing enough. the end. You want no. to argue the means. I am arguing the end. No, but you, you can argue whatever you want to argue. I'm talking about what happened when I called the last time. I told you that Atalanta outplayed the B team of Liverpool who started that game. You wanted to question me and say that wasn't no B team. I meant till they say five of the players who normally start did not start. Come on, come on, plan to stay here very long. Come on, go back, go laugh in you know, the comment section and go laugh. But I'll last All right, g- give me your, your, your prognosis of Liverpool performance. My prognosis of what happened yesterday is that Liverpool, I like, m- m- feel like Klopp right now. In an interview. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah. No, you say you feel like Klopp. Hold on, you say you feel like Klopp. Tell me that's a Klopp feel. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I feel like, I feel like, I feel like, I feel like Klopp right now. Man, I'm running out of energy and I don't have much left. I, I don't have much left. I'm going to run out of energy. Klopp said that in an interview. And that's all I feel. Like yesterday, I don't want nobody to talk to me. I don't want a message. Like, I avoid everybody. I may get, I see somebody file a missing report for me on Facebook and have my picture and last seen at St. Thomas. I mean, like, yo, what? I don't understand what happened. Like, the, the man, them just, all season, we have just not been putting the ball in the goal. Darwin Nunes, bro. The man, you, you, you want me to tell you a stat man in mind? The man who you say my most rate, Adi Mabala. <laughs> yeah. You want Go ahead, go ahead. No, I'm going to... Here? Go ahead and give me the stat. We not we didn't hear it. No, no, no. So so check your phone. I'm going to bring it up for the people, man. Oh, oh, you WhatsApp it to me. Okay, all right. So yeah, you, 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 want you want me to show it? Yeah. it to me. All right, you want me to read it? All right. Yeah, I mean, you can show it whichever one. This I, is the man. Who, I, I, I don't get I it. I don't get it yet. What do you mean I get it? Oh, no, I, ju- I, just get, I just get it now. I just get it now. I just oh, get oh, it. Okay. All right. All right. So, people, Dima want to prove a point about Darwin Nunes. So, let's let's see if I can help him. Because Darwin Nunes is the... Is, whenever Liverpool yeah. loses... Darwin Nunes name get called. No, no. I just, I just want to start off with that. I just want to start off. So just read that for the people and tell me. No, I just want to show the people them. No, but more you read it. No, no. no I'm, when you bring so, it so, 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 what I know, so, me show them. No, you can't see it, but I'm going to show the people who can see it, and then I am going to read it for them. Now that you want okay. me to. Yeah, no, son. No, no, read read so yeah, man. I'm going to. I'm going to read. Like, I'm going to read it out. But first, so under pressure podcast. Big chances scored. Big chances missed. So big chances score is in red. More fifteen. Big chances miss fifteen. Gakpo. Big chances score four. Big chances miss nine. Diego Jota. Big chances miss seven. Big chances score seven. Diaz. Big chances miss 10. Big chances score 6. Darwin Nunes. Big chances scored 7. Big chances miss 32. <laughs> so, so, man is man. Man is man. Listen to me. I'm not making this a, a Darwin Nunes slander. See? I already made my team clear from the start. That guy is a bum. And me, me no want nobody come to me and tell me about that youth ever again. Oh, but him run the channels and him this and him do this and him do this. Bro, 32 big chances missed and scoring only seven is ridiculous. Bro. But do you know Demo? Demo, do you know that? Let me finish. Let me finish. So you read out the thing. Right. Let me finish there. Liverpool, which is going to my bigger point right now, has missed 66 big chances in the leagues this season, brother. I'm not top one of baby chance. Curtis Jones one on one with the keeper kick with the ball. Our finishing and our decision making in the final final third of games this season has been horrendous. And Darwin Nunes is a big factor in it. 
Salah also, him, well, the, the defender make a great um, block. I think it was Mitchell. I think a Mitchell block for him. And Jata as well. Jata came on and for kick the ball in the goal and kick the ball straight to the man as well. And it's, for me, our decision-making and finishing is horrible. The second thing is, Liverpool conceding goals at the start of games is ridiculous. Oh, man, I forgot pause. Give me, give me two seconds, man. All right, people. While Demo takes his two-second break, let me tell you this. If you look at the chances then created, Darwin Nunes has created the most chances for Liverpool of all the players. Look at Gakpo. The man has doubled the amount of chances created compared to Gakpo. Remember the conversation, you know, Demo and I were having was the comparison between Gakpo and, no. and Nunes. No, we'll, we'll go about this, so. Oh, no, because that was talk about that to the money. No, oh. talk about the game. <laughs> like, but, no, you, but you're not talking about the game, Demo. You have brought up. What do you mean? You're not talking about the game. You a, uh, sorry, yep. I just sent you a chart of Liverpool missed chances this no, season. No, no, you, you sent me. No, you sent me. You sent me. You sent me a picture to highlight the feelers of Darwin Nunes. But the feelers of other players on the list too. Okay. Salah so like 15 or 15. But, but they have four, one, four or seven. And yeah. the rest of them, all of them are there. But Darwin Nunes is a massive standout. But the general point is, we have been missing big chances the whole season. And it's costing us, bro. It is unbelievable. 56 big chances created and missed by a top team contending for the league, brother. It is ridiculous. How, and, and we've never always been a clinical team. Like, we've never been clinical. Zine, but this is ridiculous. Hold on. This is ridiculous. All right. Man. Our next Liverpool fan is in the chat saying, Holland has 30 missed chances. Okay. Holland is also the goal-scoring leader. Wait, what does that have to do with nothing? Darwin Nunes is not the leading goal scorer in the league. But with that, what tell me that for? Manchester City is also leading the league. Liverpool are not. So I don't know what I tell you about Holland for. And, and, and so, so man is man, I did reach a part. Like, us conceding goals so early and so easily in games is absolutely ridiculous too. Like, as so, like me, for every every match I'm going in a prediction, I always say just know so I can see. And it, we have been bailed out time after time by, you know, I think we've scored the most winning goals after 75 minutes or whatever. And and for me, like, we know say it'll catch up on eventually. And you remember I came on the last time, I'm so we're not gonna lose no more game, but we expect us to drop points. I think it was going to be a draw. Um, wasn't looking for it at Crystal Palace, especially playing at home. That, man is man, I don't know what's happening. I like me say, I feel like Klopp and me now have no energy left. I don't think the title is done by any means, because especially when you lose yesterday, my gosh, my heart skip a beat. Um, I think Manchester City have a slip up left in them as well. But if we keep on missing these chances, brother, like my, my prediction just to go down the drain. So how, 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 how many games you have left? How many games you have left, Demo? You know how many games you have left? Six. All right. So you believe no, yeah, you believe that City have a slip up in them left? Cool. Yeah. What do you say about you? Do you have any more slip ups? Yeah, yeah. That's what. That's what I was saying. I thought that we were going to draw a game or two because I thought we were going to draw against Everton. We no go a good support. You know that derby thing they go. Right? And then I think Fulham is going to be a tough game as well. Um, so them two games, they made a look for drop points. Crystal Palace at home? Jesus, I couldn't be, I can't believe all now. Like, I just can't believe it. Um, I think City are going to slip up in Tottenham. Uh, that, that are the only way. The Brighton, if I Brighton from last season, maybe them could have done something. But the Brighton team, yeah, I don't know about yeah, it. Here's, here's, here's where I'm at. I, I personally give up on the title. Arsenal can't win again. I, I don't see you how... Like a jelly ma, a jelly well, call me, call me what you want to call me. Let me I, I'd Arsenal rather be surprised. Win. At this time, at this time, I don't see how City lose any of the games that they have left. 
Yeah, but we never see Liverpool lose to Crystal Palace either. Man, you, man it's at the crunch. You, the you, people predicted that, that, but people, Liverpool. but people predicted that that game was going to draw though. Who? Crystal yeah, Palace, Liverpool? Yes. At Anfield? Yes. Anybody predicted yes. bad mind or who? <laughs> you might Nobody say bad mind. Nah, that mercy Nobody demon of evil is easy. That, okay. Nobody. Crystal Palace at home at Anfield, where them no lose for the season at the Premier League. Nobody predicted that. All right. I don't see how City yeah. drop any points for the rest of their games. Well, like Mr. You tell me which one of these teams, teams, which one of these teams you think can take points off City that they have to play? I said Spurs. Spurs. All right. Yeah. Spurs. We get four love from Newcastle. Yeah, but man is man. Spurs, we can Spurs, Spurs, we have the least clean sheet in the entire league. Man is man. You know that Manchester City has never won at that new Tottenham ground, the under Pep Guardiola. Okay. The man, them, I like them cook tonight, brother. The man, you know, Pep Guardiola once said his dream is to just score a goal against Tottenham. That's how kryptonite is. And no matter how bad Spurs are playing, brother, you can just look for a fight from Spurs against Manchester City. And that is where we think they might drop something. I don't know if they might lose or draw. And, and even the Luton game, they never look all that in the first half. And then, you know. <laughs> so, all right. We, we, we'll see. All right, boy, bad weekend for you. Bad weekend for me, sir. You understand me? It's a regular Arsenal thing, man. Oh, like, it's a regular Arsenal thing. I, I told you this, you know, we don't just don't know. How to do it? We don't I, know how to get over the line, and that's I, why I'm sitting here. And you get over the line. I, I, you do it. You you, you do it one time in thirty years, and you know how to get over the line in the Premier League. Yeah, I give it one time for City team. Yeah, you do it one time in thirty years, and you know how to get over the line in the Premier mm -hmm. League. But Arsenal yeah. don't. We're talking about this. in it's, the you you know do it not time in the last that's thirty years. How many, how many titles Arsenal in the Premier? How many Premier League Liverpool have in the last? No, 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 no. no, no. Here's the question. No, let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. Hold on. Let me ask you a question. No, no, it's not irrelevant. In the last thirty years. How many titles in the EPL does Liverpool have in the last 30 years? One. How many Arsenal have? I don't know. <laughs> no, but so you're going to say, it, because, because you're saying that you know, you have one title in the last 30 years. Arsenal have two, and you say that you know how to get over the, so over the so line. So make, 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 make my point now. Make, make, make a point. It's really fun. Okay. So there are three teams going for the title. And the Pep Guardiola, this Manchester City team, knows how to them on them win four out of the last five. So in this time between Pep Guardiola being at City and Liverpool and Arsenal in the title race, it has been done one by Liverpool against this Manchester City team. So we have the know-how of beat Pep Guardiola and this Manchester City team. Arsenal don't. They were in the title race once and then battled it. Oh, that's the point. Have you, you ever been in a have, have you ever league. been in a title race and battle it? Of course. Okay. So what, what so what is the point? Thank you. What mean what's my point? I'm just tell you what my point is. You don't know how to do it. I guess Pep Demo, Guardiola Demo, is Demo, if, if when we look at the last all right, Demo, listen to me now, Demo. Just uh, give me a give me a, give me a minute. In the last 30 years. In the last 30 years. Liverpool has bottled titles and they have won one. Arsenal have bottled it and they have won two. How are you going to say to me, I don't know how to get over the line? That don't make no sense. We must go again or, or are you in a good? Go again. You done? Yeah. All right. Money is mine. 30 years is not the subject of discussion here. It's Pep Guardiola and this Manchester City team getting it done against them. We are the three teams who are involved. It happened, well, you just come in at the picture of last season. I don't remember if you did, I don't remember where you positioned them when Pep Guardiola, they win three out of four and them. So I don't remember where you finished, honestly. Probably eight or somewhere of this, right? But 
in this situation where we are the teams going for the title, only one team has got it done over Pep Guardiola and this Manchester City team, and it is Liverpool. When you get the chance to do it, leading by nine points and 200 and odd days up on top of the table, you choke and you battle it. So you don't have the know-how. And it's around this time last season when you show the league against them because they were the ones who were hunting you guys and them know how to do it so them people know. Oh, so, so but they were hunting you and surpass, you know. Okay, and then when we got the chance to win the league and we flood the league by whatever points it was before Corona, it was a 27. I will beat them by a flood, so we know how to do it. Oh, oh, no, so because we when, when you won, was the title race as close as it is in the last two seasons no, when, when you won? Point. No, that's no, the point I'm making, the point I'm making, there is no, the, the time, I remember the race being close, Liverpool had a slip. Yeah. Right? No, what? That wasn't during Pep Guardiola? No, it, no. What I'm saying to you, just listen what I'm saying. Now. Listen what I'm saying. The time when it was close, Liverpool had a slip. The time when Liverpool won, it was not a close race. I don't have anything to look at to say that Liverpool in a close race knows how to get it over the edge. I have not seen that. Because All right, that's, that's fear. That's but fear. That's that's fear. I tell you. All right, so no, no, no but, but what you do have evidence of is us getting it done versus a Pep Guardiola team, regardless of if it's close or not. So we have won when there's a Pep Guardiola Manchester City team there. You, we don't have no evidence of you doing nothing, whether it's close or far. That, since, that since, since, since Manchester City. The and advent, the since the advent of Manchester City and the Pep. Okay, fine. Yes. We, 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 and, and I'm, and I'm, and I'm, but no, but I am saying to you, in, in the advent of Pep, when you won it, it wasn't close. Because if it were close, Pep would have won. I can also draw that conclusion because every time it has been close, they won. So I have no evidence that in a close race, Liverpool have anything to show me from the past that they can do it. No, there's I'm nothing. Gonna hear that man, man. Okay. Gonna hear that man. That anyway, your great friend Flavor Max is, is trying to call. I didn't want to have both of you on. So I want as well, you just, just, <laughs> please don't because that man talks so much nonsense. Just may I beg him stay away from all sharp objects and all ropes. All right, big up this <laughs> flavor max demons have stay away from ropes and, and sharp objects. So let me see if I can get flavor max. Hey, box food. What do you mean to me? I talk nonsense. Call me box food and talk to me. Let's see if we can get back flavor max because flavor max tried to try to call it. I can't put people, I can't put uh, yeah. Flavor Max. Good afternoon to you. Good afternoon yeah. to your listeners. Demos, Demos, I must advise you to stay far from all the sharp objects and ropes. No, you know why? <laughs> that no, I go. Thanks for, the, thanks for the advice, but I don't even feel like that, Manning's man, because I'll tell you the truth, Manning's man. I think, I don't think Arteta is going to take us over the line. And for some reason, yesterday, during the game, and I got said before the game, I always knew it was going to be a tough game because Villa is a tough team and has been a tough team. After all, one Leon Bailey play for them. So you can't expect <laughs> otherwise. <laughs> having said that, <laughs> yeah. having, having, having said mm. that, man, is man, I was watching the game and during the game. First of all, the, the, the starting 11 to begin with, man, is man. Zedsenko have no business being in that starting level. And the man revert to what has been failing us in the in the beginning of the season. And that is playing Havers in the midfield. It have it no work none at all. And he might try to force it to make it work. As they say, if if you're not going to play Havers as a striker, he should not be in the starting level. It just unbalanced the team. And it, it, it make rice get overrun in the midfield. It's obvious. I'm not no expert in you know, no analytic person, you know. But when I watch football, 
it's there for you to see unless you're a Ray Charles. And even Ray Charles could have tell you that. So I said, because the man's so stubborn and his own ego and trying to, to, to prove a point that his signing is working, he cost us the season, he cost us the title, man, his man. I'm a vex. I'm not going to get over that. I think he should go. He should go. He should go because I am sick and tired of being a bridesmaid. I'm sick and tired of the likes of people them, them, them we can't have one upon them and other fans. I'm sick of it. Um, it's not because we don't have the players. And don't tell me it's because we have Champions League coming Wednesday. No, we should have get the job done. Sunday. Forget about Champions League. Get the job. Beat Villa and we move on. Even if the man must play with a walking stick against Champions Let me tell you this man is man. He said, but it beat Villa. Because we have it now in hand. Beat Villa and even lose the game against 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 Bayern Munich. Move the feel so bad, you know. No, the feel so bad because tell you what, if we think, man is man, let me tell you, oh, my team stay is a dominant no effect. We losing Sunday make it worse for us Wednesday, you know. But then I say we're going to win, we're going to buy our unit, but I change my mind. We're not going to win, man is man. The season is over. Yeah, man, Arsenal can't, win the, cool. Arsenal can't win the Premier League again, man. Arteta will crumble, man, because he's, let me, let me, let me, I can tell people what Arteta is going to do. People are going to come out against him about it and he's going to play the same set of players because he believes he can prove to people Zivchenko of his start yes. for Arsenal. I tell people from, listen, I told people, you know, from that player came to Arsenal, I tell him that he's not. The reason why Pep never want him is for the same reason he cannot defend he can't, he can't defend. defend. Him not defend for the Ukraine. Him never used to defend for City. Him not defend for Arsenal. Yes. That's one. That's one thing. Yes. Right? Yes. Yes. I, I read Trussard. Trussard had a problem at Brighton because they started benching mm -hmm. Trussard and he wanted to start. That's how the mm -hmm. fallout thing. Trussard at Arsenal is a, is a player who come off the bench. Martinelli for start, brother. Kai Havertz Martinelli for play. Start. Forward, brother. Gabriel Jesus is not Forward. good. Me support Brazil, but them man they not play in a Brazil side. The man can't score goal, and the man they tell you, so that's not his strong point. Even if the man we put, up the it had a better input. Odegaard, Zivchenko, and Declan Rice in the midfield, and and play Tommy Asu a left back. Tommy Tommy Asu a left back. This don't make no sense. Man is mad. Man is mad. So let me ask you this, man is mad. Make me feel overwhelmed, you know, because. Me see it coming 30 minutes from your cry out. No, 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 ball, no, no, ball, man, no, 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 ball, man. no, ball. Me say, no, 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 I can see it. They are growing momentum in the game. 30 minutes, me see it from way down the road. But call my friend and say, why this man not making any changes? They are building momentum and it is coming there, knocking there, knocking. And then, bam, their coach, um, the kid, proactive and put on the NBA. And this, this is it. It done not. Well, the NBA is good. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? A side coming from weird on the road. No, my thing is, man, is man. If party is on the bench, why party can't play? I'm my dream team, you know. All right, okay. Play Tommy Asu. My thing, man, is man. I said to my friend, I want to just rehearse all. So, then for what he's going to do. Um, cranky, cranky, come, I don't cranky. care about things. Don't, don't cry, man. Cranky, come for help you. Don't cry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I said, why are we gonna get Tommy as the two fullback Ben White oh, and get God. Party and Rice? Why do man know how to play Party and Rice? I've been asking for that. Don't, don't cry, don't cry, but don't, 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 don't cry. Can you not say we're gonna cry? Them Liverpool money are gonna clip you and, and, and play the Arsenal for that. I'm not pissed about them. <laughs> Liverpool lose, I'm not pissed about that. They have beat me up top about my house. So I go on my house right now. So what we're, we're cranky as but car man is man, I tell you, you know. Cranky, wait, wait, think about this coach, Cranky. <laughs> I don't know. I don't. I think he may get a lifetime contract. Yeah, yeah, your volume, your volume low, Cranky. <laughs> I can hear you loud. You can't hear me? No, when you hear people tell me where you're cranky. Well enough. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah. Yeah, so my thing, my, 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 yeah, they say, they're saying hello, right? Um, so my thing is simple, right? The, the first game, do you know when you played against Aston Villa in the first game? 
are the same thing Arteta do. This Zivchenko business, this Kai Havertz in midfield, this Trussard starting, this and we lost the game by a goal to nil. And the man come back in at this game seat. and start it. <laughs> me, not, me not understand. Honestly, me not understand. But go ahead, go ahead, Cranky. Good afternoon. Yes. Welcome. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me? All right, people. You, I am hearing you, but it's low, so I don't know if the people. You hearing him? You hearing Cranky? Um. Yeah, me. I hear you low, but me. I hear. You. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. The last cut. <laughs> don't Cranky it's still volume. Low? It's still low. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. you see, all of them said it's low. It's low. I didn't say you are talking. I know, it's my headset. I miss no, man, it's all right. I hear you now. So maybe you need to come Can closer you guys to hear me? Yeah. Oh, I'll turn my thing up. Dr. Dan said it's still low. They said talk like T got. No, I'm not going to shout. Um, no, I'm hearing you now. You know. It's better than when you just started. But they're saying that. Okay, so yeah, it's better, okay. it's better, it's better okay. now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I think I think they will get a lifetime contract from the Crankies. So my name's man. You got people forget where we were. But I'll get to the coach, by the way. You forget where we are, we were, where we are, you know. We're, we're fighting and complaining about not winning title. In Wenger's last number of years, under Emery, under who was other interim coaches? We we weren't close to winning the title. Freddie Lundberg. Freddie Lundberg. So people look, he's done well. I think he's a great systems coach. And I think he's a great coach behind the scenes. I think he cannot game manage his way to the paper bag. That's what I always say. He's an awful game manager. <clears throat> whether it's picking his team, whether it's making decisions during the game to change direction of travel, he does he does that poorly. Um, <laughs> Duckland says that the man. <laughs> Duck, hey, Duckland, Duckland. He said, Mr. My channel, my youth, are you me a beating? I can me have the mic and you forget that. The man, but the man, yeah, yeah. the man supports Manchester. Let me just say, you know, people, Duklan supports Manchester United. Who so drew if, two, if two. you're Minzy, if you're Duklan, you can't talk to me. Like, you're <laughs> irrelevant. You're irrelevant. You don't make champions. You can't talk to me. You're irrelevant. So stop to a glass. Just stop to a stool in a glass house. Okay? It doesn't make no sense to me. You're not good. You will never be good for a long time. You spend over 700 million and you don't have no side for your feet. You have to go redo your entire side. Which you, have, you have a coach where you walk out a press conference. Of course he should because we have the most loss of Man United team ever. And by the way, by the way, let come back to Ateta. Dima, Dima, Dima. Every time you come to the channel, you have some excuse, my youth. You should have won yesterday. You had about seven clear cut chances. Crystal Palace had two or three. It just wasn't your idea, Dima. But stop talking about who get injured and who not injured and who are B team and who are C team and D team and F team. Okay. I'm Dima. Stop it. it. It gets annoying. Seriously. This 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 whole excuses. It's your team. Clap has been playing this team all the time. He makes changes where everybody scratch them head and he get outcomes. So why are you complaining now? Right? I thought that to come in your yard and box you. Crystal Palace come in your yard and box you. Your yard is not your yard anymore. A lot of people yard. So stop complaining. Anyway, back to Arteta. So from Arteta, we played Manu, I think it was two years ago. One of the better games. And we're losing. We go up one love. Then take away Martinelli goal. Manu go up two one and the man just threw and bunch of forward. Nobody know where they play. I said to myself, say, that don't make no sense. Why would a coach do that? You don't out of the game. You only done one. <clears throat> That's been our tether since that time. I agree with everyone. Zinchenko should not have played, should not have started yesterday. Because when you have dynamic wingers like Diaby and Bailey, you cannot have a Kiwi or, or Zinchenko playing left back. The reason why Kiwi didn't play because he got shown up against Bayern, <clears throat> which I knew was going to happen. He, you guys have been praising Kiryu, and I sit here saying <clears throat> he's a center back playing left back. When he gets a dynamic winger, he's going to be showed up, and it so happens, so done. Right? We're not playing low blocks against like Man City, so he gets shown up. And that was very apparent. But Arteta cannot game manage. That's I've been saying this forever. Ask Apollo them. I'm telling Apollo in Arsenal 101 this forever. And every time he game manage, I show them where the deficiency game managements are. Why isn't Partey playing? You guys can't talk about, about um, Giorgino. Giorgino got shot up against City the ball, and against Brighton. The ball was played around him. He wasn't in the game. Why isn't Partey playing? He's our best CDM. And by the way, all the people saying Rice, sorry, I'm being critical now, is a £100 million pound player. To me, unless it's Chelsea, £100 million pound player have to have offensive skills. Let me repeat that. 
I don't know of any hundred million pound playing football ever that don't have offensive skills apart from who Chelsea buy. Can just buy anybody. They buy Caicedo, they buy Fernandez. They don't have no offensive skills. Everybody else who pay hundred million for, they have offensive capability. Rice doesn't have any offensive capability. He's a good defender. So who would I have played? Cranky, CDM, Tommy, left back. Those are Cran you said you said cranky CDM. Uh, very sure yeah, that's what's in Party, I party. <laughs> <laughs> I used to play CDM. I'm having flashbacks. <laughs> party CDM. Because management, here's what people don't seem to realize. And I watched Jacka play this weekend. And here's what's interesting. The pre-assist is very important in football. <clears throat> that's what Partey does really well. The pre-assist. I give you the ball in a certain position. Yes. You pass it on to somebody else. But I give you a position where you're dangerous. You can either go to goal or make a pass. It's dangerous. I watch Xhaka do it because Apollo and I are always arguing about Xhaka. Because he hates Xhaka since he got the finger. And I am keep telling him Xhaka has improved, improved, improved. He's winning a title. We ain't winning anything. But I don't... Look, Arteta's going to get a new contract. That's what I was saying. And he should get a new contract. But as I said on Arsenal 101 yesterday, he needs help in the dugout, as they call him baseball, or on the bench to help him manage games because he's so he's like a people that catch fever when he's watching football. You know, people say catch fever and sit on the sideline, I kick every ball, MC. Mm. He's not thinking football. He's just reacting to what's happening versus being strategic on the sideline. So that's my soliloquy. What about listen? My my issue is why do we start Gabriel Jesus when he starts? We don't create as much and we are not as prolific, especially this season. And why every time we play Kai Havertz and Odegaard with Rice, the team struggles in midfield. Now, everybody <clears> has been saying, finally, we have found what Kai Havertz should be doing. He has looked so efficient. You come to this game, seven games to go, you have a home game. Why wouldn't you, right? He struggled up front against Bayern Munich. Gabriel Jesus came on and did well. Why wouldn't you start Kai Havertz up there for this game, leaving Gabriel Jesus for the front line against Bayern? Like, that is my issue. Why did he put him back in midfield against his Villa team? Oh, I, I, look, I think he was trying to go offensive, frankly, with Odegaard and Havertz and Jesus at three or some. I'm not a Havertz fan. I haven't been a Havertz fan. I'm not convinced by Havertz. In football, to me, when you play in the offensive position, two wings and center forward, you have to what I call differentiating qualities. He not have none. Good passer, good linker play, play hard, jump in the hair. What can he go by a player? Every time we that's what you know why Jin can play? Because Jinchenko is the only person from deep who's playing the ball between the right back and the center half to get you in on goal, over the top or through the line. That's not happening with anybody else. That's why Jinchenko plays. And we're playing double pivot with Jinchenko. Here's a problem. Havertz can't run. And when he does get behind the defense, he doesn't score. Slow. He, he doesn't score. Look yeah, at me tell you yeah. he got behind the defense. Yeah, one yeah, one. The yeah. last time we got the defense, he, he made a shot and Saka scored. He doesn't score. So why are you playing? At, everybody gets excited about Havertz. He, he scores tapping. He doesn't score those dynamic goals. He doesn't get behind the defense, even though the opportunity is there. So all these people are enamored with Havertz. I'm like, eh, he's okay. Yeah. Not all right, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Um, um, I'm flavor Max with your with your with your last. Point. Go ahead. Yeah, my final <laughs> say is that if you play sometime, Kanki say he played Havertz because he wanted to to be attacking. Sometimes to be attacking. It don't just take attacking individually. Sometimes the balance of the team will give you that space to attack even more, you know. <clears throat> and at, uh, if you play dirty or even party in the middle, that would have opened more space for us to be to be attacking than play Havertz. In the yeah. As I say, it have never worked. He started the season trying to prove to us, trying to force him in the team. It never worked. And as I said, he revert to what never been working since the start of the season. That was the reason why people was criticizing Havertz, you know. And because now you put him up front and find find some farm, you're trying to squeeze him back in midfield. It, 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 it's not working and it will never work. And the man ego and, he, and his own inability to relax himself and do the right thing costs us the league. Now, my wife, what, what is the assistant? Assistant court, what are their rules? Because if me have a second man around me, as my assistant. So nobody can look on the coach and say, coach, you think you make a blunder, you know? 
that never work, you know. We're not going to do that. Call like them can't tell him nothing. And for me, I don't think he should. They're not going to renew in contract, but I don't think he can take us over the line. Because mind you, now is the right time for us now. Man, you going to get better. Chelsea going to get better. City going to get better. If it's not now, then when? If City get better, I just go over and I watch football. My dad was go over and I watch football. If City get better, all right, Flavor Max. I know. I mean, they're they're, they're an excellent team. Yeah, Flavor Max, you gotta take a next one because I know Box would say yeah, that we're talking son. nonsense so this year. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. So let me say this to Cranky. I somebody was talking about Ben White and um that um nobody yeah, nobody is talking about Ben White. All right, I don't think. I think Gabriel again made some mistake, and I'm wondering if some of these players are are tired, having played consistently because he 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 had some simple giveaway again in the game yesterday between him and um him and Zivchenko. But but part of my part of my good afternoon to the persons who are just coming on. Good afternoon to Troy and all the others. That's right? Okay. Yeah, man. Um, lots of things, people, lots of things going on down by Rossi's. I'm telling you, uh, uh, we're going to have to have a day when we talk to him um, about this, right? Um, and, and let you all know. But uh, we have um, 50-50. Just hold on a sec. Let me make, make, yeah, make this point. Yesterday, I cannot blame Ben White. What I will say to you is Saka got a couple of breakaways. And mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to say this for the first time. If that was Phil Foden, he would have been more precise in some of those balls he played in the box. Saka overplayed some balls in the box. So if you ask me right now, the level of play, Phil Foden is way ahead of Saka right now, right? And I'm not saying that Saka is not a good player, <clears throat> but where Phil Foden is at, some of those errors that overhit squares are crosses from Saka, Phil Foden would find the head of Haaland or one of the other attackers and i think sometimes this overhyping of some of the players it when you have these games when you expect them to stand out they don't but for yesterday's game i would not blame ben white in terms of his defense yeah it was a tough game daniel had a lot of um a lot of the ball and did really well i don't we didn't lose the game because of our defense you know Right, we lost the game because we didn't really create anything apart from the one chance that you saw. Well, a couple of chances, but the main one that have that Trussard missed. I don't think we created a lot. We look, Havertz got one where he broke away, you know, and then no, he went yeah, but, out but for a corner. He, you know. he, he fumbled it. He, he, Havertz is. I don't want to talk about Havertz. I, I just. I'm not a Havertz person. I've never been, and probably never will be. Here's the point, Manning's man, on Saka. So Saka's stats are off the charts, and this is going to sound contradictory and heresy. Saka has had a good season. You look at most games Saka play, he hasn't played well. He scored or he has an assist. So his stats look off the chart. But tell me one game where Saka dominated. That's, a, that's, a, that's what I'm dominated. saying. And maybe, maybe, I don't know. Should you and maybe this is the discussion? We have 50 50 what's called. Should we focus on the stats? Or should we focus the stats on stats are important, right? Because I can play brilliantly, like like Grealish. And don't have nothing for sure. Yeah, so which one is more important? The stats are probably more important, to be honest. But but in football today, you have to have both. You have to have both. As you're not going to win the tough games. And here's my last point, Mannings, man. When we played Man City, the only player who looked like he belonged to me, holistically, and he only played a short time, was Partey. You go look back at that game and the little cameo he had and how he looked in that cameo. The rest of us look like we are there in a headlight. All we're doing was defending, defending, defending. We couldn't get out of our own shadow. So sometimes you watch the games and you wonder what people are seeing because I get frustrated when he doesn't play when he's not injured. And I see Georgina playing. I see Rice playing the six. I don't understand. Yeah. And Arteta seemed to be not, his, not in his corner, actually. It doesn't seem yeah. that this, way. This, um, this person says that, listen, the truth is that Havertz, uh, soccer crosses were good. But Havertz was in midfield instead of leaving. No, the, the first cross was way over to the right. Wait, wait, hand, right top. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Because he I don't has know. no right foot. Management. Me and Tony, I was talking to the man's man. And Tony is convinced now. He may score some scream his right foot. He has no right foot. He just swings it and hope it connects. He has yeah. no control over his right foot. He's a left footer. So. Yeah. Yeah. All right. 50-50. We have you online. 
this is not the day for Manchester United because you, 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 you look like you're going to have your lowest finish. So I, it will be interesting to get your take today because see, you will not tolerate any disrespect. So let, let me hear from you. What say um, you? Good evening. Or uh, even, you know, good evening. Good evening to you and Frankie. And good afternoon. Good afternoon. Let's use afternoon. <laughs> afternoon. Yes. I'm listening now, right? Boy, well, I want to start off with first. You know, some matter of fact, I never they call up with this. Uh, is, uh, is some support, but I call for now. But we still get to that still. But, you know, Cranky touched on some points around it. Um, Kai Havertz and, and Gabriel Jesus and, um, in particular, um, Kai Havertz, right? Um, you know, you see, when you play in Germany, my name's, you are for it. Um, they give you all the time needed. They are afforded all the time needed to, to get a proper touch on the ball, you know, to work in space and to just uh, slow down the game a bit more. For you, like in, in England, it's not so much the case. Kai Havertz, he, he does pick up good positions at times, but he's not quick in his decision making because even against Aston Villa and against Bayern Munich and other teams across the season, I've seen where Kai Havertz playing as the false nine that he is, right? He gets in behind easily, picks up the space, but he gets the ball at feet. But in terms of his decision to, to shoot our party, he doesn't make it quickly enough. And defenders um, oftentimes dispossess him easily um, off the ball right at his feet. You know what I'm saying? So I think Arteta throughout the season, he has identified that because he did say that he's going to buy a number nine. Um, they, they said that they're going to buy a number nine this season. Now, at the end of the season, the summer, now, that's a different conversation in regards to who is that number nine. You know what I'm saying? Osimhen, Watkins, um, Ivan, Tony, whoever is available, you know, they're going to cost money. But he, he has recognized that problem. In terms of soccer, for us, Brian, um, of a player that Saka is, I do think that there are some flaws in this game. I think Phil Foden is a more all-rounded player. And I think the reason as to why Phil Foden is a bit more all-rounded, I think it's because he plays um, multiple positions. He can play on the wing, he can play in midfield, he can play in the 10. You know what I'm saying? So he can play as a false nine, you know, back when they just start through papers, they play him in that position. So I think with him playing in more positions, it kind of helps his game. You know what I'm saying? Because when you're playing as a winger, so in terms of the fundamentals of a winger, he has that in his game. And in terms of the fundamentals of a midfield player, in terms of being creative, he also has that. Whereas Saka, his fundamentals is, is more for a winger. Can he get better? Definitely. You know, he's only 22. Because I was really um putting how old is Saka again? And I checked last night and Lumi and he's 22. So in terms of his game, it's going to grow. However, I do think that Saka actually needs a number nine going forward to, to, to really link up and get more out of Saka. Because playing Gabriel Jesus, and, and Kai Havertz in that position is just not going to work out for any natural winger in terms of linking up play with those people. You know what I'm saying? Um, in terms of Arteta, lifetime contract, uh, I mean, you know, there's some Arsenal fans who they're not in favor of Arteta. But as, as the previous caller said, I believe he doesn't want to be a bridesmaid. And many Arsenal fans in recent times saying, you know, they, they want to win a trophy, like a major trophy. I would say give Arteta the next season. The reason being, I feel like the shape of the Premier League is changing, seeing that, um, what's his name again? Jurgen Klopp is leaving at the end of this season. Pep Guardiola, you know, Man City, we're going to see what they're about. United, I'm not too sure about United, honestly, what we're going to do in terms of money, in terms of uh, a manager. Newcastle, um, let's see what they're going to do. Aston Villa, Ona Emery, they're doing a brilliant job right now. And, and I don't think Aston Villa is, is in a position where big teams are just going to pick off their players. You know what I'm saying? It's a very ambitious club. They're going to keep their players. So I think they're going they're going to be in that position next season. So I would say give Arteta next season with a striker and see what he does from there. If he doesn't win something next season in terms of a major trophy, then you can start the question, should we move on from Mikel Arteta? But the bigger question is going to be, who are we going to bring in with this squad who will relatively still be in a... Listen, I, I don't, I don't like the nature. Who are we going to bring in and we need to suck up? Please, please, listen. Tell the people that you're a Manchester United fan. So you should not be using those we terms like like yeah. who should we bring in and um we who should get I this bring in yes time. yes sir because if he moves on say next season um after the season finish for the next season it's going to the squad is going to be young at the uh, at, at that stage right but you have to bring in someone who is absolutely going to hit the ground running and win the trophy because if you bring in a next manager who doesn't win anything then it's going to be the same trust the process start over again rebuild and that's not that's not what you want because Liverpool, the, the Van Dyke of the world, they're getting older. Salah is getting older. Um, Darwin Nunes is continuing to miss chances. You know what I'm saying? Gakpo isn't the best player. So the, the shape of the Premier League is changing. So Arsenal, they have to be the team that, you know, really push forward and start to challenge yeah. and win a trophy. 
All right, let me say, you know? yeah, hold well, on, before right, you get there, so let me just, man, go ahead. Man. Because he made one point, Cranky, that I think is, 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 is good, and this is the point. If, I think if Arsenal had like a Ivan Tony as a, or Isa, Isaac as a number nine, I think you'd see a whole lot more from Saka in terms of his overall game. Um, probably less pressure on him to create some of his opportunities, getting a lot of layoffs and things. I don't think Havers does that well. And I think Gabriel Jesus holds up the ball and plays a different kind of a way. Like, I almost feel like Gabriel Jesus, if he stays at Arsenal, should play a wing. Like, that, that's my, like he, sh he should play a wing. And again, for me, I read Trussard. I think Trussard, sorry, Trussard is one of the better finishers of the players up front. But I feel like he has greater impact coming off the bench, in my opinion. Go ahead, Cranky. So there are a couple of things. The fact is Trussard, Havertz, ESR, which is Simon Rowe, they don't have any position on the football field, but they're very good footballers. So what does that mean? They're not wingers. They're not center forwards. They're not two tens. They're not eights, but they're brilliant footballers, very good footballers, have skill, technical ability. They work hard. They just don't fit any given position. That's the problem. So Trussard has to be in the middle of the park because he's by far our best finisher. But he's not a winger. <clears throat> Secondly, when it comes to Saka, how many people have Saka beaten this? What if you see Saka roast a, right, a left back? What if you see Saka roast a left back? Like you see Duku do or Grealish does sometimes. He's doing a great Grealish. He doesn't beat his man. He may get behind a man based on a pass that's played over the top or through the middle. But that's part of the problem, man is man. If you beat your man and he's behind you, then you have options in front of you who to pass to. He doesn't. He plays one two with Odegaard. He plays one two with White, or he looks. He gets the ball, dips. He goes inside. They play him inside, and White goes on the outside. So that's part of the problem you face. Your wingers can't beat anybody. Martinelli has lost the ability to run by people. So really? That's, that's came. Martinelli's not beating it. When last did Martin beat anyone? Yeah, but I think the last three four games he's not beating anybody anymore, and that's what he does. That's his game. That's his game management. That's the problem. Winning. We're not beating anybody, so. We get double team on the wing, not even double team. They just put somebody over there, and or we're not creating situation where you beat a man, so he's behind you. The defense has to come over. You then have options. That's not happening in the game. That doesn't happen. That's part of the you problem. You know, a number nine is, is is definitely needed because I believe it will take a, a bit less pressure off Saka in terms of creating chances for himself. Because you see, when you have a number nine as a winger, at least they have someone in the box to look up to in terms of to provide that pass. When 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 you have a Kyle Havertz or Gabriel Jesus who is not going to pick up the position of a number nine to be that um, instinctive striker to get on the end of chances, even a half chance, it's hard to, to play that pass because there's no one in that set position like an early Haaland where somebody goes at early Haaland scores. The man is just in that position in the right place at the right time and he just tap it in to the to the back of the net. You know what I'm saying? And Kyle Havertz and Gabriel Jesus, they don't pick up those positions. Whereas Saka, he has to look up and say, okay, this guy's is in, in this position, so oftentimes he tries to drift across the, 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 the defense, and then he, oftentimes you see more recently where, um, obviously he's a left footed player, but he's always going for, for those shots in, um, compared to the one that he scored against uh, Manuel Nayo, um, in the Champions League, and he was doing it against Villa because there's no one in the box, so you have to be creative for himself and, and shooting, you know what I'm saying? And Crank is right, he, he hardly beats, um, the fullback. Or the center back because oftentimes because of those intricate passes between Ben White, Martin Odegaard, and Saka, he gets in behind easily. You know what I'm saying? And then he can advance and either shoot or play a pass across the the face of goal. Yeah. So, in this game, in this game, easy. cranky. Sorry, in this game, two times the ball was played over the top. One was to Trussard and the defender catching back. I am telling you, and this Slow is not up. the first game. This is Slow not up. the first game where a ball has gone over the top from a corner. Um. Mm. And 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 when when he gets it, the defenders find a way of catching him up. This is where I think, like, um, you remember a few years ago, Martinelli had this ball where I think it was Kante lost it, and he took it all the way down to score on Chelsea. Yes, if yes, that was, yes. In fact, yes, in his own half. In his own half, because of raw pace. And I think you lose that when you start Trussard and Mart. I almost feel like you need him to wear defenders down. And then you bring on the Trussard, who off most of Trussard's goals are scored when he comes off the bench. So, man, 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 the question has been asked numerous times. Should Martin be given the opportunity down the middle, like like um, Havertz has been given, right? So you know, the manager just held bent and playing Havertz, and people have... At some point, you're going to score goals if you're in Havertz's position, because we create a lot of chances. But Martinelli against Chelsea, 
Martinelli against Manu. I think it's Chelsea twice, actually. And Manu once has done that, taking the ball almost the full length. We don't have that from our other players because he's quicker and he has some skill. We don't have that in other position. If we had a Duku had Saka's decision making and Duku's skill, you'd have an awesome player. Saka doesn't yeah. beat people. I keep saying this forever. And your winger, even though he's great at decision making, so he's always hesitating and looking and surveying and assessing what should I do next, which is great for a young player to have those skill sets. But he got to rinse his man once in a while. He doesn't rinse anybody, man. His man. He yeah. doesn't. And I, you know what I think he's going to do? Look and see. He's going to put Havertz back at centre forward in the Champions League, you know. Bring in at a party or I don't know if he's party because he hasn't played party. In party, he hasn't been injured. Yeah. But um, let me give um, um, 50-50's chance to talk about Manchester United because do we I have don't to? know. <laughs> like, we're talking about people I mean, in the top listen, four or top yeah, five, I mean, right? You know, the, 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 Listen, listen, listen. You see, I'm not really emotional or bothered because, you know, from the start of the season, I, I saw what was coming in terms of the Wolves game. I've always said it. Um, when when Cunha was playing in that game and Nunes, they, they ran rampant in that midfield at United. And it, it happened against Brighton, um, Forest, um, Brentford. And even when early, early that time in the season, when we went on that five-game winning streak, um, we were lucky in terms of the, the comeback that we made against um, the likes of Brentford at home, etc. You know what I'm saying? And the manager repeated the came out and said that the midfield, there's no problem there. And he said that we're moving in the right direction. And obviously, I know that wasn't true. So from then, I kind of saw what was coming. And, you know, hopefully, Radcliffe and these people move him on. You know what I'm saying? I'm not really bothered, honestly. You know, so why, why should I be bothered by Eric and, Al, and the ludicrous things that he said? 50-50? Yeah. How does, how does one fix a broken manual? No, the the, 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 the the blueprint has always been there, you know. City, Arsenal, especially in recent times, Arsenal, they have shown the blueprint in terms of um the crankies, yes, they're they're not favored by many Arsenal fans even to, to this date, but they they have fixed certain things in terms of implementing certain people, as well as not only implementing the right people, but the, the people that they've implemented, they're doing the right job as well in terms of the acquisition of, of the players over the years. You know what I'm saying? And you have to fix upstairs in order to fix downstairs, downstairs, which downstairs is the pitch that the players would play on. United problem over the years, it's not the money or whatever the case is. It has always been what is upstairs. Because I guarantee you, if United had a proper board and proper structure from evil when Jose Mourinho was there, I believe he would have won a Premier League title because oftentimes yeah. back then, oh, oh, Mourinho oh, oh, wanted oh, certain oh, players. Oh, oh. 50, no, hold on, hold on. 50, 50, 50. Remember, no, 50, remember, no. 50, at 50. Time, at, listen, man. 50-50. So, so, I remember at that time, the City were not dominating. They were winning the Premier League, you know, but the, the dominance didn't it was starting, but it's not like, no. When Marino I mean, was, was there, the we, we just said, when Marino was at United, City weren't dominating? The, the, it started, I believe they, they had a, they had one, um, two Premier League titles already. Also, right? But I'm saying, you see, in recent times where they run away with it, yeah, he didn't start like at the moment because the first season he never won it. I believe Mourinho was there in his first season. I remember Mourinho did finish second behind Pep. I think the, the gap was huge still now. But guess what? Guess what? United did the following season in the summer. They, they gave the man, um, Diego Dallo that came in injured and they bought Fred from Shakhtar. Shakhtar, how are you going to close the gap with those two players? And Ed Woodward was the guy in charge at United at that time. And Ed Woodward, he was a financial guy, he wasn't a, a football director, technical director, or anything like that. You know what I'm saying? Remember, I know Jose Mourinho even wanted to go as far as to, to move Martial from United. I know what the board said to him, one of the Glazers, that they like the person. The Listen, player. do so you realize? Let me, let me just say this. Let me just say this to you, right? Let me just say this to you. Mm -hmm. You know that you had a Chelsea team that won the, the league during that time? Yeah. Do you know you have a yeah, Liverpool? You know, you know a Liverpool team that won the league during that time? And then when? City. During the during the time Liverpool, that you're talking, when Liverpool, in the pandemic year, Liverpool, Liverpool won the league. Won the league. Jose Mourinho wasn't there. No, I'm, but you you're talking about from the time of Jose Mourinho up to now. So I want to know because you're saying that if you had a different board, you are sure that you would have won the league. My name's, my name's in terms of the players that he would have brought in and the players he would oh, have you, moved yeah, no. you know what Jose Mourinho said in a recent interview? Hold on, no. Remember this man is a serial winner, no man is. He's a serial winner, this, you know. Uh, you know who he's a serial winner? With, with real belief, hold on, Jose Mourinho. He has won every club that he's went to. 
what I'm saying is, in a recent interview with Rio, you know what he said? He said that until United move on, some of these players, they will not win a next Premier League title. That's what he said. And a lot of these players he's talking about now are players from the past he wanted to move on. So that's what I'm showing you without a proper board. Or yeah, you but everybody could have. have listen, can can 50 jump, 50. No, that not. Can, can I jump? Right, but, so but, right, 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 just 50 50. 50 50. That's being unfair to me. Yeah. No, because me, he said Mikel Arteta wanted to move from the likes of Obama Young and Lacazette. 50 50. Without problem. 50 50. Just listen to. Just listen to what Cranky is saying. All right, because if it's right, if it's, if it's right in the view that the not just the boardroom, the front office, like a baseball team or a basketball team or football team, it's imperative to a front office with people in the right seat with the right skill set. So whether it's your technical director, whether it's those people who respond for commercial activities, you need the right people in each of those seats because he's right. Until Arsenal got what's his name, the Asian guy, Indian guy. Until they got, um, until Not they yet. got Edu, even though they had Arteta, to get started. who is making decision about what players to buy? Who's making sure we have the money to buy those players? Right? That's what City though, where they had a guy from Barcelona to come run it, the, the, run the, the the technical aspect of their team. That's what Tottenham was doing when they had the person who got convicted for um, whatever fraud or bribery from Italy that came over to their team and started selecting good players. That's why they team improved this year. You need people in the front office to make good decisions because you could buy a lot of players like man you do and buy nonsense they have spent 700 million have not the show for it everything i spent over about 600 million have not the show for it you can have those situations where i spent a ton of money but i bought nonsense and i have no return on my asset what arsenal has done brilliantly over the last number of years we spend a lot of money but look at our team it's the second highest value team in football right if you look at our team and look at the valuation of the players and they're young too. Not only are they valuable, they're young. If you look at Man U team, how many players would you take out of Man U team? Three, two? If you say Man U come by Man U City team or Man U Arsenal team, you would be challenged to put one Man U to play in that team. You would do it to make it look good, but none of them get into that team. So therefore, the front office, who, who the, the players don't pick themselves in a management on 50-50. The front office identify the players and make sure they have the money to buy the players and they'll circumvent or avoid um, financial fair play. So I don't disagree 50-50 on that. I will say Jose Marino sometimes, yes, he's a serial winner. He's also a serial problem. And that's why he, that's why he's a nomad. No, he, I, he agree. Agree. Have I believe with, with a uh, let, 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 let me tell you this. He would have won some. No, 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 no. Let me finish on this point because Cranky intervened and he made this point. Here's what I'm saying to you. When based on what Pep has accomplished at City and what Klopp was able to do, I'm talking about the money, the salad during this time. Let me say this. <clears throat> Even a good board at Manchester United would have been a difficult proposition because during that time, people could have said one, just one change at Tottenham, and they could have won the title because Tottenham also finished second with Hurricane and those guys and Delhi Ali that was and Song. That was a tremendous Tottenham team. So so there are there are so well, many. And, well, and let, me, let, me, let, me, let me finish. What what, no, no, let me finish. 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 Let me let me finish now, man. So I do not subscribe to the idea that if the board were changed at Manchester United, then they would have won a Premier League title because then I would have to give Pep the one thing that he needed. I would have to give Tottenham the one thing they would have needed, mm -hmm. Liverpool the one other thing they would have needed, Chelsea the one thing they would have needed. And with addition at Manchester United, given the how well those teams has, had done, if every team got one other thing added, would Manchester United be any place different? So that is my The Premier League in, the, in itself, it is hard to win. But okay, let me not say win the Premier League, but we, we would, as a club, we would have been in a way better position right now in 2020. That I agree with. Than what we're in now. That and I agree what you, what You're unfair because even Pep Guardiola said it recently. If it wasn't for the board, when the guy left, um, I think it was Barry Adal, went to United, he said if it wasn't for the board and, and Tiki and those guys would have never been in the position that is, you know, that's what Pep said. If you look at the history of Newcastle recently, when the, the, the that, I don't remember his name when he was there. He didn't spend a dime on Newcastle. He always brought in the wrong players, was really um, mean with his money. And Amanda Stavely came in recently. 
and they were ambitious with their board and look at what, what yeah but did but what i'm that what i'm saying to you though 50 50 of a proper board and ambition 50 50 but listen now if you use that for manchester united if unai emery got all the selection that he wanted in that year everything that he wanted i, I could say to you arsenal could have finished better so i could use that for every team because unai emery ended up buying um um who did he get instead i think he got pepper instead of who did he want he wanted some other player what is zaha what is zaha, zaha and he, who did he come down and zaha would have been a cheaper option no so listen that, the point i'm making what pepper was. no so listen the point i'm making the point i'm making is that we could all say if we arsenal had a different board at the time that supported unai emery he would have gotten even this other guy Paul torres who was younger he wanted so many players that he didn't get at the end of the day we cannot just assume that if manchester had the right people in the board because we'd have to give that to all the other clubs in terms of well, where they're falling every club, if every club, no if no, no man, club, but you're not, you're not letting me finish you know but say so you go ahead can you not go and let me finish you're being unfair if you're, you're but you're, you're not letting me finish but what i'm saying is that uh, let me make the point i'm making and tell me just tell me how i'm being unfair i am saying to you if you say if manchester had a better board in place under Marino, they would have been in a better position i am saying to you that the other top six clubs had some other components that they needed if those other clubs get those components that they needed right would manchester united getting what they needed with the other clubs getting what they needed be ahead of those other clubs because all of them with what they had at the time were ahead of manchester united so can i jump in go ahead cranky so here's why i disagree with mannings is this no of the other clubs have the money man you has none in fact, no club in English football, commercially, does better than Man U. They're what, second to Real Madrid or somewhere around there? So, giving that the case, and money talks... Is it, is it money or value? Which no, one? It's, it's money, it's money. Va value is different from money. Money is how much money I, I generate, how much revenues I generate, and how I spend that money. They waste money. They gave, what's his name, $400,000 pounds a year. Who's the goalkeeper? They uh, have uh, $400,000 pounds a year for a goalkeeper. Who what are we drinking? But I could say the same thing. Average no, is the no, highest no, paid no, player no, at no, Arsenal. No, no, no. We're confusing. We're confusing the no, board. Hold on, no, but Arsenal is still a, a, a properly um brand club. Go ahead, Cranky. Go ahead. Let Cranky no, finish. We're confusing the board with the people who they hire to make decisions. The board is a governance group. They make decisions about who to hire, who to fire in certain roles. It's the people in those roles who are given the autonomy to make decisions. They had commercial good people in their role because their revenues went up significantly but from a footballing standpoint they had the wrong people just they, they, you can in, an, analogize them to everton how do you spend 500 million pounds and have not the show for it and struggling at the bottom of the table because hmm. money wins football games the richest teams in the world are the ones who do the best in football 95 percent of the time except for manu and everton frankly most of the clubs who have money what is psg Rima did. Barcelona overspend, Bayern, the people with money are the ones who do the best. So if that's the case, since Manu is the richest club in the UK and the second richest in the world, they should be doing better on the football field. But their personal decision, look at their, person, look at their team, man, is man. Hey, listen, I, what, when I, when I, play defense. I can tell you this. If we, when, 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 if we had got Jurgen Klopp because he was linked to Arsenal, if we had gotten him, Arsenal would have won with the team that we had. With the Van Persis and those guys before it went, would have won the Premier League. Um, maybe, maybe no. Not. It's, it's the same thing that Man you can say. Exactly, Manu, that's what is, I'm saying. That so many it's teams probably, could. Yeah, probably it is greater. Probably it is greater. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That so many teams could say that. Things that you can. Let me tell you. You see, example in the last season. Let me, let me say this: When David Moyes took over at United, right? We had we just won the Premier League the previous season, so we had. Are you you weren't supposed season. to win it, you know. That season, oh, yeah, I, I know. I know. But I'm telling but, you, but Arsenal, as I'm saying, that, that it was bad board decision by Arsenal. Why right. Manchester United won it? I'm, I swear. So look at this now. Look at this now. Maybe Cranky disagree when with Moise that, but team, I tell you, Moise, Van Persie should Moise, not have been no, down agree, there. But go ahead. When Moyes took over the team, now we had those players remaining, right? I could make the case that if a Pep Guardiola or a Jurgen Club 
had took over from Moyes, if they were appointed, they would have won. However, so that they win the league in that one season of isolation, right? How are you going to progress as a club if the structure of the, the, the club isn't right? And let me go to the to the board itself now, right? When they give um when they give a player like Jaden Sancho three hundred and fifty thousand, but that's not the board. What what right, Cranky is saying that the board doesn't do that. That's what Cranky is saying to you. Hold on, hold it's on, not the board, on, right, Cranky? Isn't that contract? what you're saying? Yeah. Who, who, who negotiates the contract of these? It's not the board. It's done management. by the people, like a Vinay, for example. A lot of people in the seats that are sitting there negotiating the contract. It's not the board. Wait a minute. It depends on the team structure, right? Because teams operate differently. At Brighton, for example, the owner may be involved in those this, this, this discussion. That's why they make so much money. So it depends on the team structure. But I don't think the board is going to be in the day-to-day -day operations of the company. That's not the board's I, I, role. Let me not say the board. Because the cranky, the cranky like son the is cranky son is on the Arsenal board. I'm sure that he doesn't negotiate the contracts. Yeah, yeah. Edu right, does let that. Let me use the correct terms, right? Let me, let me not say the, let me use the correct terms. Not the board itself, but the board is, is quite different compared to the technical director and all those people, right? But board appoints these people at the end of the day. So let me not use them. But if yeah. the technical director or whoever is responsible in that era for negotiating, negotiating contracts is doing, you know, such ludicrous things in terms of giving a player like Jaden Sancho that amount of money, how are you going to progress as a club when it comes time to move on this player? So that two years elapse off the contract, right? And the player isn't performing. So 50, 50, 50, I'm going to stop you there. 50, 50, 50 I, I see where you're going, but I'm going to stop you there. All the big teams get these players because of the money they're going to play them. When anybody else can pay them. So Partey is making, what, about 175? Havertz is making 200 plus. They can't go to any other team. But that's how it works with Manu, Chelsea. No, hold on. You're being unfair. Why are you like saying people are being unfair? <laughs> If you're going to cranky, if you're going to, it, it, it is easier to move on a player that is on 175,000 pounds a week compared to a player that's on 400,000 pounds a week. It is much easier yes, to move yes, on a summer yes, party yes, compared yes, to a no, no doubt. especially depending on the age as well. So what I'm saying is there has to be an incentive for a player to earn his wages. When you give Jaden Sancho that amount of money, what is the incentive for Jaden Sancho to work much harder to give? No, 50, 50, come on, 50, 50. Because 50. 50, 50, 50. Oh, come on, come on. No, no, listen, listen, 50, listen, 50, listen, and learn. listen, listen, listen. He made his name at Dortmund. That's how he made his name, at Dortmund. And to go to Man U, who is not winning anything, you have to incentivize the player. He went from Dortmund as a winning yeah, team. but not by that much amount of money. But if then maybe the right. player would not yeah, have yes, gone. Maybe, maybe, maybe. But what maybe I'm saying, right. what, what I'm saying, what I'm saying, no, 50, 50. You can't deal with the thing in isolation. Okay, let, me, let me ask no, this question. But not to, fifth, let me, you're not, ask let me no. ask a question. If it was Manchester City, do you believe if City had but, purchased Jaden so, Sancho, so, they would have given it? 50 50. Let's use 50 50. Just listen to what I'm saying. When a player is coming to a club, the player knows that he's in demand. You have to understand that that, that gives the player the leverage to negotiate because a player can be coming there and say, listen, they already know who is the highest player at the club. If you already have a day getting, for example, 400,000, listen to me. And I'm coming there, I'm saying that what I am bringing to you is way more. Not only that, if I stay one year at Dartman, you have to pay $100 million for me. If I leave now, you only pay 70. So I'm going to leave now, so you pay 70 million that way. I get more salary. So it's so many other things and variables in those negotiations that you can't no, look at. There are variables in the negotiations. However, the club determines to where they want the talk to go. Yes, you, you, you might have a commodity, a hot commodity where everyone wants, right? And you can pick, choose, and refuse. In the time when um, Jaden Sancho was purchased by United, we had waited one year old. Jaden Sancho had no. his name was a listener, his name was a hot demand, you know. But there weren't many clubs coming in for Jaden Sancho at the time when we purchased him. Clubs would have been linked to Jaden Sancho, you know, but not many of them went in for Jaden Sancho. And I'm saying, for a club like United, you see when you're United, a player doesn't dictate what they want to do. When you're Real Madrid, a player doesn't dictate what they want to do. And if what? You're Kylian Mbappé what? Leaving PS4, if you're uh, Kylian this... Mbappé leaving as a free agent, you can dictate how you want the negotiations to go. Because Kylian Mbappé is one of the best in the world and he's also leaving on a free. 
when when too many and the comma fingers of the world were going to Real Madrid, you could have never dared to give um Perez any talk about how much money you'd want to earn. Of course, you would say, you know, I think I should 50 50 you are telling me, brother, make me stop now, man. I don't want to do this. I'm going to make you finish and I'm going to done talk. You are telling me that because a club is Real Madrid, Kamavinga can tell them how much he wants for his salary? Are you kidding me? I said he I said he can, but he has to be careful in terms of the demands he's making. That's what I'm saying. So, so as the player, I know my value. And I can say, where is, I, I want 30000 And And they decided, right okay, okay so you're saying to me, if he says, I want $30,000, and they say, no, we're giving you 1000 he has to go because it's Madrid. What is the no, point? Man, so what is the point? That, are, man, what, saying, what point are you I'm making? You, what, what I'm saying is, because of how this been real much is and how um, the, the type of structure they have in terms of um, the, the balances of the books, etc., etc., and in terms of how they look at the, the, the players that they purchase, I'm saying, yes, my valuation, I, I might think that I deserve 30,000. Now, obviously, if we're going to negotiation, we're not going to make a man give me a thousand, but maybe we said 25,000. I'm saying, all right, you know what? Give me 27,000 plus some bonuses. But I'm saying, oftentimes, players come to United without achieving anything and they make demands from the club, and the club is stupid enough to pay out these demands for those players. That's what I'm saying, man. In, Jaden Sancho at the time did not accomplish anything in his career to get that amount of But 50-50. But it listen, it, it happens to every club. Arsenal fans will tell you. Cranky, car, cranky, do you believe that Kai Havertz is a $60 million transfer? Hell no. All right. Do you believe that Kai Havertz should be getting the highest paid player at Arsenal? Yeah, he's the first or second, but yeah, he's no because he, it, yeah, yeah, no, he shouldn't. He, he, should he shouldn't be. be. He shouldn't be. No, so it happens at every club. 50 -50. I, by, by, the, by the way, 50 50. We gave away Mesut Ozil for nothing because he was making 350. <laughs> and we'll pay him more. We gave up Bamiyan for nothing because he was making 350. Lacazette? <laughs> no, Lacazette struck contract ran down, but he was making too much. When do is it basically? Him. Is the same thing? Most of our players, we couldn't get rid of them because they're making too much money. But, but, <laughs> On this though, man, who does overpay, nobody overpay because they can afford to overpay. But he's right about this. If I want to sell them on, I'm struggling because no club can afford them. That I agree with. Yeah. That I agree with. And so there has and and you see, you see, you know, say, and yo, money, you know, say, you know, ask that one, you know, to me, you know, because all I'm trying to say, Jaden Sancho had went to a club like Manchester City, and Manchester City is a properly run club. Remember, say, most of the guys upstairs come from Barcelona, you know. In, in that double system, um, papers there and all those type of stuff, right? When those guys look at Jaden Sancho and he, and Jaden Sancho makes a return to Manchester, you think City would have been mad enough to give Jaden Sancho that, that amount of money? You think so? No, but 50, you have 50, to work 50, for your money at Manchester 50, 50. City. 50 50, Jaden Sancho is not a good exit. He left Man City because <laughs> he was gonna get game time, so he wasn't gonna go back to Man City. No, but say he wasn't at Manchester City from the beginning and he was going there from a different But you're, you're, using, uh, you're using hypothetical. When I use a hypothetical situation... No, 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 listen what I'm... No, listen what I'm, listen what I'm saying. When I use hypothetical situations, they're bringing back to the reality. Let's use a player who went to Manchester United from the said Dortmund, Erling Haaland. Went to Man City, you mean? Yeah, Man City. Man City from yeah. Dortmund. Is that right, 50-50? All right. Do you believe that Erling Haaland was able to command the kind of salary that he wanted going to Manchester City? Yes, because when you have a talent like that, you want to actually secure that talent, not only by the contract link, but in terms of the money that you give him so that the player can not look elsewhere. And, and players like Erling Haaland are um, what you would call uh, generational talents. So, yes, he can demand it. Okay. Uh, that, yeah, that's but, but, but Sancho, was, Sancho was a very bad commodity when he was at Dortmund. At the time, yeah. His stats were very, very good. That's why he got the contract from Manu, because his stats yeah, were it, it's, it's not, oh, You see, the thing is, Frankie, it's not only about his performances on the pitch, but what was he doing off the pitch? This, their actions at um, Borussia Dortmund. So you have to look at all of those things when, when buying a player because what you don't want is to buy a player who, yes, he might be performing good, 
but what is he going to come at the club and, and do in terms of discipline, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera? And since arriving at United, there have been many stories about written about Jaden Sancho in terms of discipline, etc. And that's one of the reasons as to why he's not playing no, for the club. I, I don't agree he's not on about it. Sancho's issue was more. No, about... it's the same reason. It's no, the no, no, same. No. I, I saw a documentary. Go ahead. Yeah, 50 50. One thing with you, you don't listen to no man. You love interrupting. I, I saw a documentary where Dan Ashworth, I saw an interview with Dan Ashworth at Newcastle when he, they were purchasing Anthony Gordon. And the guy was talking about this. He's a great player, good characteristics, whatever whatever the case is. And these are the things that you also have to look at when well, 50, a 50, just I'm going to say something and you cut me off and you're going to talk about Newcastle. Um, I'm, I'm telling you, that's how he I'm is. Going, going, he going. cuts you off and says you're disrespecting. The only thing Sancho was being accused of is tardiness. He was not accused of person party and don't get himself in trouble. That's not, I don't I've never heard about Sancho. He's tardy. He goes to training late. He's not always on time, but he was producing on the field just like Hazard never trained a day at Chelsea and was he couldn't you couldn't go, mark him when he was playing. Everybody talk about Hazard and his laziness and don't train and don't jog back, but he produced on the football field. Sancho produced on the field. Every player gets latitude. Like but 50-50, just brother, you can't just listen, please. Talk 50 50 talk because you like to hear yourself. Talk. Yeah, so all right, so 50 50. Nah, no, 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 50 50. Yeah, you have, you have like a minute, so go ahead and make your final point and go. Can you not go ahead? So, go ahead. what I'm saying is there are many variables you have to look at when purchasing a player. When, when um, Barcelona purchased um, Usman Dembele, you see all the problems that he caused off the field. Remember, you know, not when he had the injury problems, you know. I realized, you know, when Usman Dembele stopped up the injury problems, when he actually picks up him, like when he actually start go a bit early and take care of him, buddy. At first, remember the chef and the people that are really used to say, This man stay up all night play game. The Barcelona used to call the man and say, Where are you? How you not show up a train? The man answered on phone. I remember if one time he take a private jet to leave the country. So these are the stuff that a lot of these players do as to why you're not seeing them perform on the pitch because they're not taking care of themselves. Hey, 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 50, 50, 50, 50. They can't take care of the pitch. 50, 50, 50, 50. All right, 50 50. Listen, you're going to take an next class. So bless up. Let Cranky finish. 50. Let Cranky. Finish no, no, and no, last point. Go ahead, my last point is um some of them they cut me on the track of a pay for some advertisement in their money. But listen, when I give me a strength, they get messy. Um so we recently started with some fun cams where like somebody just after like a gameplay, you just take a two to three minute video and give you a reaction to the game, you know, team played whatever, and I could have sent it to me. So after the Bayern game, you and Cranky could have just you know. We can't, you know, Why would I send people. a Manchester United like, fan who is not in Europe a fan camp? No, he's a business man. In this case, it's a business man. It's a business a, man. A, a a, why would I? Why would I buy Arsenal fan send you something? Who is a Manchester Depends United? Depends if we win or lose. Depends if we win or lose. Yeah, because obviously, <laughs> what what? Why would I send a Manchester United fan a fan camp when Arsenal lose? If if we lose to Bayern, why? No, man, it's not when you lose alone, man. No, no, it's not when you lose alone. No, but you say after Bayern game. Win. So what if we don't win? So let, let me hear it. 50, let me hear it. Anyway, 50, 50, 50. Have a good. But it's not going to be by end game. All right. Have a good day, 50. <laughs> Listen, crack, you go talk. Crack, crack, you go. <laughs> no, so, so. so. Go ahead. So, <laughs> yeah, 50, 50 is an interesting character. So, <laughs> I think money, the teams with money are the most successful teams in football. So I agree 50, 50 in this context, which is you need good people in your executive suite and your boardroom who are decision makers to allow you to be successful. Manu at one point was the most dominant English team because they had by far the most money and they could buy the player they want. If you want Berbatov, I go buy Berbatov. But want Ferdinand, and they all want to go to Manu because they paid the most money, they had the most money. Abramovich came into Chelsea and changed that dynamics. He had the most money and so Manu had competition and it only got worse when City came in. Liverpool got money through, when FSG bought them, they sold the Suarez, sold the Coutinho, they were invested really well. Arsenal never really spent money because they had what they call a self-sustaining model, which is the business runs itself and they shouldn't have to put money in the business. They changed that construct when Arteta came in because they realized that money truly makes money. In none of what they didn't realize that. So you have to spend money to gain money and invest in the team. And when you do well, your commercial revenues increase so you can invest more in the team. That's what's been happening. So in the English league now, we have about what? Four or five teams with a lot of money because Tottenham is now making more money revenues that they generate more than us, man. Even though they got to pay down the stadium still. Villa has owners who has money. But even though you have money, Manning's man, doesn't mean you can't spend it in the money. People don't understand this in football now. Because what you generate commercially is what you're allowed to spend. That's why City have over 100 charges because they try to trick people by saying they're getting money from sponsors 
when they were sponsoring themselves, man. Yeah. Right? Well, here's what I'm saying, Cranky. What is also true is sometimes the coach at a club also affects a player's performance. Yes, yes, very much so. So I believe, depending on who is coaching, like I don't think Sancho is such a bad player that he could not have produced the numbers at Manchester United. I think he could have. If there were a, there was a particular, like put Pep in that team with Sancho and, and our, he may have been a better player. That's no, I think he, played, he needs to play a different league, man. man. English uh, league is too fast for him. Our club. Yeah, yeah, it's just like... It's but just I think like, the English game is too quick for him, man. man. As a winger? Yeah, which is cool. Yeah. But here's what, here's what, like, what, what I also want to see, which is one of the disappointments I've had with Arteta at Arsenal. Who, who has Arteta came in at Arsenal and seen that you can look and say, wow, he has made him a better player? Well, if you look at the Arsenal team, people will say Saka is the first person they'll talk about, right? They'll say he has made Saka a better player. But most of the players he has, he has bought them. And what we say is improved all of them, right? Saka is the only one he's really interested that has stayed in the team. Everybody else he's basically bought. Just think about yeah. it. Yeah, so that is my my, my point is I, I like when like Klopp came to Liverpool and I can identify players who were there that remained apart. Because really and truly, you know, Saka and Ben White <coughs> are the two players and Martinelli. Who are not like Arteta players. All the other starting players are players that he well Saliba. No, he bought, he ben, White. He bought, no, he bought ben White. Yeah, he bought right. So it's really Saka. He didn't buy Saliba and he didn't buy Martinelli Wagner. and Saka. And Saka, yes. Yes. Right. And I, honestly, I can't say he has improved um Saliba. I can't say that. I don't, I don't think, think he's improved. I think I think he was anti Saliba to me. Exactly. And he take credit like, for him though. He takes credit I, I for him. Like Saliba, Saliba came Saliba. back from France and proved his worth at Arsenal. Yeah, he played two games against PSG. Believe, and did well. Yeah. I still believe that if Arteta has a choice or a chance to, he would sell Martinelli this summer. Like Martinelli is one of those players that I think Arteta will sell if somebody put in a good bid for him. I don't think. Martinelli is a player that he really likes, and I've said that before. So to me, he really hasn't improved. In other words, yeah, he, he's buying players, and I like coaches who can also improve. But we have we have a, a, a Mr. Fortune on the line. <laughs> Mr. He's Fortune, to, he's going to talk to you about hey. Declan Rice. Hey, 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 thank you. Good morning, Matt. Good morning. Bless up, bless up. You're describe me before saying my name. I had I had to call you when you ask. Um, you guys doing okay? Yeah, well, we're doing good. We're doing good. Dima said we must sell Martinelli to Liverpool, but. <laughs> Yes, when you when you ask the question, um, who has Ateta improved? I think Ateta has, has improved the entire team. Right? We we can't we can't um not look at the fact that for two seasons in, in a row the performance of both teams. Um Arsenal lost yesterday and and is the first loss in a while, right? Since twenty twenty four, yes. Right. Prior to that, prior to Prior to that loss yesterday, I think we um, Arsenal earned 31 of 33 points, right? Yeah. So the team has been, and and while the team want to win the league, and the team should win the league, and we come up short again if we don't win the league, I think um, the, the team has done very well for two years in a row. So he has improved the team. In my opinion, but I think, has he has he improved? Talk about so tell me about the players that he has because like does a team playing better mean that the players that were there have been improved? Have have, have well, yeah. Well, that's where I'm going next. What I'm going next is that you can't talk about the team and not talk about the players, right? And and when you look at, I think I think Saka has improved. I think up to yesterday. You could see Saka tracking back and defending. He has done that more this season than he than he did last season. That's one improvement, right? Um, he has improved the two centre backs. I think 
I think the two center backs have um, been better in the last two seasons, right? Up until yesterday, um, they look a little bit shaky. I think there's been a lot of improvement. For me, yesterday's game, I think the mistake that he made um, is in he didn't get the lineup right. That would be my opinion. I think in the middle of the pitch, which is the reason why he bought Declan Rice, um, to, because the season before that, the goals that we conceded came down the middle of the pitch, most of them. And, and yes, and throughout the season, you'd have Declan Rice and... and um, Jorginho. Or Declan Rice and Pato, or Declan Rice and somebody. Yes, so he placed him in the position by himself, and I think it shows that maybe we spend too much pay. Um, maybe we spend too much. I know that's your player, <laughs> uh, management. I know that's your player. Uh, I know that this, <laughs> this was going to come back to Rice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, Let's do that. Sure. Circle back right round to rice. Go no, ahead. But, but, but he, 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 he was he that on peace. He that <laughs> But Cranky, am I wrong? He was brought in to solve the problem, right? And and um, yeah. that can help us win the league. And and, well, no, and I, I think he was brought moment. in because part two things. One is he was gonna supplement the midfield or add to the midfield, and party is injury prone. Because if party was not injury prone, I'm not sure we'd have bought Declan Rice actually. I don't find it because think about it. We had Georgina, you know, so we didn't really need rice. Part is better than rice. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. And and if if you look at the way we conceded yesterday, the goal that won the game, which was the first goal, I mean, you can't a hundred a hundred million pounds. He's the third highest paid player on the roster, right? He's making twelve million a year, two hundred forty thousand pounds a week, and. You get caught not being aware of where the opponent was. That's that's very very um. That's amateur, in my opinion. That's amateur. Um, he should have known, and it's easy to fix if he had the right body shape. Was switched on. He didn't know that there was a um there was somebody behind him. And yes, and but the goal so, so then so then rice was not the problem. The coach made a selection error. That means the coach should have started Jorginho, which means that either Gabriel Jesus or Trossard should not have started. I, I and that was saying the beginning that that he should have had Jorginho or Party alongside Rice. Which means um, that you're, who who would you, who would you take out at the starting eleven? Who out of the starting eleven? Trossard, Trossard. With, 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 with Trossard probably. Yeah, if and, and, and left. Put Jesus out left and put Havertz at the, the, the nine. Right. And a half. So you're still yeah. starting Ziv Zivchenko? No, no, Jesus shouldn't have played. Shouldn't um, have played. Tommy should have played. Tommy should have no, played. I wouldn't have played him yesterday. I would have played um, Tommy. Um, Tommy has to, yes. Tommy has to play. You, you can't have a team that with dynamic wingers like Bayern has and you're playing Zinchenko or Kiwiro out there. That's crazy. Kiwiro can't run and defend. Zinchenko can't defend. How does anybody substantiate making that decision? I have no idea. No idea. But but um, Andre, you're the first person I've heard, and that's why I like people analyze games, you know, who call out Rice for that goal, because everybody's talking about the average should have blocked the cross coming in. Where was Jintenko? Gabriel should have done this. Rice was the one in no man's land, looking around like he's lost, and it, and the person on the right who came in and scored, Rice should have picked him up. What, Rice was and this, is, this is what I this is the same this, thing this with the Bayern I, the Bayern Munich goal, you know. He was caught mm. out of position, you know, and made a bad tackle. And he, that ball, I, I think in, in that Bayern Munich, um, I think the first goal that they scored, it, I, I blamed him. Uh, but, but go ahead, Andre. Well, well Cranky, this is, this is amazing. Did, did you hear what I just said, Cranky? No. He, he's blaming De Declan Rice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no I can't. not because that is because he's a player that I like. I can blame him. No, but what okay. what I will say yeah, though no. is that I put this this the majority of the blame is on the team selection because I I have a coach who he has a mentality or he has a mindset that he doesn't waver mm -hmm. from. So he is adamant that Zivchenko, once fit, and Gabriel Jesus, once fit, are going to start in his team to the detriment of the team. That is my problem with Arteta. I think he does it because he wants to prove people wrong. And I'm thinking, like, bro, this is your, like, your third year. 
You don't need to prove anything anymore. No, this is fifth year. It's fifth year. Your fifth? Yeah. It's fifth year, yes. You, so you don't need to prove anything. Yeah. I agree. I think we're on the same page when we talk about the, the, the starting lineup. I think that, is, that was the first mistake. And I think at some at some point in time in the game, he made five subs. It, 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 it would look like. It would look like. Um, I know he was probably trying to he was trying to get back in the game. He was trying to solve a problem. But when you start making changes like he did, it looked like he like he didn't believe anymore in what in what he set out to do yesterday. You know what I mean? And so um, I'm, gonna make, I'm gonna make a statement which is gonna sound ludicrous. Hmm. He's the worst game manager in the English Premier League. <laughs> no, 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 by, no, no, by no, Frank, good distance. Frank, Frank, no, good distance. no, Frank, have you ever watched the top? Cranky, have you ever watched the Tottenham coach? He's just stubborn. <laughs> <laughs> He's just stubborn. He, he, he has nine people on the field and he's still playing high line. He's just stubborn and stupid and saying, just doing it my way and puts his chest out. My better game management is atrocious. No, he put on, you know what he does? When he's losing, he just throws a bunch of forwards. Nobody knows where they're playing. He just, oh, Atleti, and, and Ketia going on, Smith go, just, just on that goal, the second goal. How are you, in football, they teach you this, right? If a forward is on the halfway line, you can't have one player marking him if you're taking a corner because you never know what may happen. One goes in front of him, one goes behind him, or goes beside him, right? Just in case. We can't, and Smith Rowe, who can't tackle himself, is the one person marking Holly Watkins. Does that make any sense? If they win the ball, you're in trouble. How does that make sense to anybody? His game management is the worst. Here's another example, guys. Kiwi are against Bayern. Should have been off from the 25th minute. You shouldn't wait till halftime. You're going to lose the game by halftime. There is no way you see Sane run him three times and get a run so easily. He should be on the field. I've seen Kante abuse people at 30 something minutes. Kante just say, you know what? I can't check him on chance anymore. He's only done that one time in his managerial career. Who's the kid that came from Portugal? He's not Nottingham Forest. Took him off against Liverpool. When he was making bad pass or bad pass, at some point, Manning's man, you have to pull this string. Don't oh, give a player's confidence. Uh, what's his name? Um, Nunes. Is it Nunes? Something like somewhere like that. Something like that. Yeah. But he plays in the pool. Left, left back was, player. Yeah, yeah. He was just making bad errors, and he pulled him off the third something minutes. That what should have happened against Kiwi, with QER. He was awful against Bayern Munich. We kept it until halftime. We could have lost the game by halftime, Manning's man. So the point I'm making is this: his game management is atrocious. Like, really bad. And the more you watch him game manage, on the sideline getting all upset and jumping up and down like a little schoolboy, the more you realize that, you know what, he may be a brilliant yeah. coach. I, I will also say him. this, Cranky. We don't have a goalkeeper who can make a save to keep us in a game. Like, like... Oh, my goodness. I am telling you. No, no, no. He did, that, he did that against... um. Bayern was it Luton? No, against Bayern and Luton. Whatever he did, you know, he's done that a couple. He wasn't. Days. Listen, I I think that ball that came across for the first goal, I, I, like that. I, I don't know my my goalkeeper. I don't. Anyway, I don't. I don't. I just felt like he wasn't in the best position to do anything. Yeah, I, I do think you need players in your midfield who can do something out of nothing, and we don't have that in our midfield except for Odegaard. Rice can't do it. Avers cannot do it. Partey can do it. Odegaard can do it. You have to have those players in your team. Because you're going to be bogged down sometime. You need somebody. Jesus can do it. Probably Jesus, he doesn't know where the goal is. Right? He can be very creative. Jesus got a header, man. I like yeah, yeah, and he, he's a header ball across to Avers. He tried to hit the near post. He's just, he doesn't know where the goal is, man. Yeah. And how, how do you see the title race going, Andre, at this point? Well... Um, I think it's easy. because because let me just it's say this easy. because I'm asking that because when you came on and started talking, Demo says another jellyback Arsenal fan. Of course, Demo supports Liverpool, who are in third position, you know. Just yeah, just, yeah, yeah. <laughs> who who um who hasn't um you know they had one championship since club club has been there. Just one? One. Yes, that's oh, what I was saying to him earlier. They won a yeah. Premier League, but they won a Champions yeah. League. Also. Yeah, one, but one Premier League since Klopp has yes. been there. Yes. Yeah. In eight but seasons. Sometimes in football, sometimes in football, um, people support teams um, and they behave in a certain way because they're just envious of the direction your team might be going in. That, that's all that <laughs> might be happening. <laughs> <laughs> let, the, best let, uh, 
the best thing about Arteta is this. Um, the, um, Andre, <laughs> the best thing about Arteta is this. Uh, we have built a team for the long term. That's all I'll say. No matter yeah. how bad he is at managing games, eventually we'll win because we're just so good. We have such good players. I, I, I agree with you. Look, as far as the type will go, it's very easy today to say that City is going to run away with it based on, on history. They, they certainly does have the potential to do that. Um, very strong squad, very strong team. But the league, the league also have a history of being unpredictable, right? Just like the game is unpredictable. So you, you look at the upcoming games, the next six games for each team, for all three teams, Liverpool, City and Arsenal. And some people would argue that, that City has the easiest set of teams um, to up against. But, you know, this football is, the English league has proven to be unpredictable in that way. So for me, I think, I don't think Arsenal is out of it. I don't think Liverpool is out of it. I think they still no, I, I, Andre, all I have a chance. Andre, here's a difference. <laughs> yeah. So uh, every difference in in uh, uh, ask the questions for each team. For, for Liverpool, naming their match winners. Or well, from say Salah. Look, name name their match winners. Well, apart from Salah, look. Yeah. Yesterday, yesterday when I saw Jota came on the pitch. Yeah. Um. It, it was almost certain that they'd be back in the game because he has a history of, you know, affecting those situations positively for the team. But yesterday, they just couldn't score a goal. If, if you see, if you remember some of the things that happened and they just couldn't score a goal. So yesterday was, yesterday was more of those situations that you cannot use to define I'm the I'm not using yesterday. I'm just saying, name, name the match winners in the team. Match winners. I but, count them as a that, Um... Have a lot of guys there. They're better, they're, 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 yeah, but are they match winners? Like a... For the match winners, uh, yeah. well, you know what? I need a goal. He's gonna deliver a goal. Um, I think Jota is one of them. Okay, so Jota and Salah. I think that... Jota is always injured, so it's hard to say Jota. But go ahead. Yeah. Who else? Who else? Right. Um, I think I think the has the has on They have they have one game. I think, I think the has on the periphery of a match winner. I don't see him as a match winner. So me give, here's my point. Who for I, Arsenal I, are the match winners? Who are match winners for Arsenal? Who are, who are match winners? <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, Saka, Odegaard, <laughs> I don't, I don't consider them, none of those two to be match winners. Yeah, I, I know. I know that's where you're going. I know that's where they're going. But, hey, but here's my point, though. Here's my point, though. I can name you five or six oh. in City Steam easily. That's yes, the difference. Yes, yes. And that's that's why they're gonna but, win the league because they have match winners. No matter how bad they play, they got match winners, match winners, match winners. Four do you know how many winners. games City have won this season? Do you know how many games I, City I, have I know won how they yeah, but, but but tell me how they've lost since since the turn of the year. Tell me how many games City, they have lost since the turn City, of the year. Hold on, City has won twenty two games for the season. Yes. And Arsenal has won twenty two games for the season as well. So here's my question again. Right. How many games have City lost since January first? Um, I, I don't, I don't think they've lost. Exactly, but they do that but, every but year. Saying, every think, year they do the same thing. Every year. Yes, and 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 this year there can be an exception. They and by really the way, their best be. player didn't play for the first half of the year. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. They're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna win the league. They just have a better team. And by the way, Duku was unplayable the other day. By the way. God help us if he gets to make good decisions, start scoring goal, because he's really unplayable. Yeah, yeah, it's it's it, 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 um the, the the right argument, the right argument is at the moment is that they are most likely the team to win it. Yeah. But I think that you know the league is unpredictable, and this weekend coming, it could have another twist and turn. And I personally believe that sometimes. Sometimes it seems as though they, they interfere with the results, right? So, so we don't know we don't know what to expect. <laughs> because if if on the last day the top three teams is depending on the result on the last day to win the league, that's great for the league, right? Yeah. Would you agree? Um and, and that's what they'd probably like to see happen. So so we'll see what happens. I'm not I've not written off Arsenal as yet. I, I think man is man has, but I, I haven't written off Arsenal despite Despite that, that Ben White, uh, not Ben White, Ben White and and um, and, um, and Rice seem to be 
the first names on the team sheet. Yeah. Well, Andrew, I sent hey, you something. Can I say something? I'm a right, right. Can I say something? I get all these comments in the yeah, chat. Yeah, but wait, wait, wait. I get all these comments in the chat about a player scored against us yesterday and the player plays for Villa and how do I feel? Because everybody think I hate the player. Let me set the record straight. I don't hate the player. But let me just make a clear point to you guys. Be clear on this. I support Jamaica. And when that player starts scoring for his country, no, when he starts playing for his country and scoring, I can then laud the player. So whatever the player does for Aston Villa, kudos to him. I hope his success continues. But I support Jamaica. And I don't see those returns for Jamaica. So you can beat me all you want and smile all you want and beat your team, Cranky. But me support Jamaica. And if it was Jamaica against Arsenal, mm -hmm. I would support Jamaica instead of Arsenal. The player doesn't produce a Jamaica. That's why the player gets flack from Cranky. Go ahead. Um, go yeah. Ahead. So, so Andrew, I sent you something. Because did, did the election in Trinidad go... Um, Go last weekend, or yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It went on. It went on Saturday. So and, people, um, the, the the TNT football, TTFA, had their um election, um having come yes. out of um the FIFA normalization. Yes. Yes. yes that so, happened on Saturday. So how how did and, it go? Um, it uh, by all accounts, it was everything went smooth. Um, and as you know, there were two candidates, um, uh, here and Edwards, um, won by, I think he got two thirds of the votes. He got two thirds of the votes, which is, um, which is, a there's a song statement by the, by the stakeholders that they knew what they wanted. His manifesto, he said all the right things, uh, um, in his manifesto, and he also said all of the right things in, uh, after the election, he got 67% of the vote, um, 38 out of a possible 57 votes, and and, um, and everybody voted. All of the stakeholders that were eligible to vote, vote. So everything seemed to have gone um, hey, Andre? pretty smooth. Hey, Andre? Uh -huh. Did the check uh -huh. the manifesto line up with the JFF's manifesto? <laughs> 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 no, it was, it, it was different. It was Hey, there was no lawsuits or anything like that. <laughs> no injunctions, no. <laughs> so, so, um, his work begins today. His work begins today. Um, he, he sung like he, like he understand the importance of, of working with CONCACAF and working with FIFA, um, as opposed to being in opposition of them, right? Um, I think working with them is important. The, to find the right balance between working with these organizations who, who run the game and, and standing up for the country and standing up for the development of football in the country, to strike the right balance between that, I think, is important. So, um, so far, I've not heard anything negative about the election. Okay, awesome. So, up and up for Trinidad. That's good. Um, I don't know. That's what we would like. That's what we would like. <laughs> <laughs> but it seems seem like most countries in the region, well, I shouldn't say most, but St. Vincent, Trinidad, Jamaica, a bunch of countries had the election this year, right? Guyana. Yeah. yeah. That bunch. Is, is, it, is it a FIFA construct whereby elections are held at this day, what, every four years is, every, what, even years or something? Is um, that how it works? Elections every, every four years. Right. They seem to have... Like every four years. So, um, yeah. so if, you, if you've been having it every four years and you had the election around the same time, it, it's, it's not going to change, right? It, it's going to be the same. I think, I think for Trinidad, Trinidad only could have happened two years ago, but it didn't because the normalization committee was supposed to be for two years and then it was extended a year and then a year again uh -huh. after that. So... The election finally happened, and um, and there's no, there's now a new president, a new slate, a new um, slate of elected officials. So we see where it goes. Were were were, were these part? Of, were were any of the persons on this new winning team part of the the last admin that was there or served with the normalization committee? Um, no, um. But however, so for example, he he's taken over the job as of yesterday, today, and the normalization committee, let's 
you know, hired a Gensec, right? So I, I don't think it would be wise, and hopefully he, he doesn't, to move the Gensec out of the way if, if he has somebody in mind that he thinks that he wants to bring in that can do a, a good a job or, or a better job, right? Um, he's going to probably have to work with that person for a while to understand what's, what's about how the Federation is run on a daily basis. Um, because I'm sure it's not as easy as some might think it is, right? They have tough decisions to make. Like I know that um, Trinidad had a, have a under 17 team that was getting ready to make a trip to the US, right? That cause that costs money. Money needs to be spent immediately. Uh, so they gotta figure out all that stuff out. So um, I think time will tell, time will tell. So far he has said all the right things. He's, he seemed to be um, someone that wants to be inclusive. Although I didn't hear much mention of the diaspora, um, but uh, he seems to want to be inclusive. So we see what happens. Okay. 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 Sounds good. Sounds good. Looking forward um, to um, hearing hearing some stuff or touching and cranking up. Cranking up like his best thoughts about the comment. <laughs> but, the, but here's the thing, Manisman. I said I'm going to stop talking about the player and the Manisman. They keep bringing it up. I stop talking about the player. I don't even call the player by name anymore, and they keep bringing it up. So I'm trying to move on. They won't. They won't let me move on. They will not let me move on. And I could beat the player easily if I wanted to, but that's not what I'm here to do. I'm not here to beat anybody. But anyway, <laughs> Gunners, Boss, Devon, everybody, the regulars, they all want to bring it up. They are gloating because the player scored against my team yesterday. Yes, the player scored. Much love to the player. Yeah, I'm not glad he scored because against my team. But when the player starts scoring for for my country, then we can t then talk to me. Then talk to me. Then in big games, talk to me. Then against Canada, talk to me. Against the US, talk to me. Against Costa Rica, talk to me. I, you want me to keep going? Talk to me then. But not talk to me now. Come here, you know. Not talk. Yeah. Now. All right, and, 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 Andre, I did get uh, the thing. Um, so I sent the number to you, right? Yeah, I'm gonna have to do it again. Yeah. Because, um I, yeah, I tried it down when it came. I'm yeah. gonna do it again. You send it to me, okay? Yeah, all right, and then yeah, so I'll, I'll right. So just as soon as they text me, so I get the email. But let me just say this, all right? So let me just say this. Um, um, just a couple of things. Um, so there's a U20 coming up, right? And I hear Jerome Wade did an interview. I know Cranky said he doesn't want to be in the youth football, which is fine, but he said that he is he is going to make contact with all the players in terms of those overseas to check up on their progress and all of that. So fine. All right. So there's also the under 17. And I know that um, Freddie Butler, who is a coach appointed, he has been doing a lot of the work with the players in America. So he's coming to Jamaica to look at talent in Jamaica. All right. So I know they have some scouts, but I, I want to say this, right? At the appointment of the scouts, you know, which I think is a good idea, I think the scouts need to be scouted to see if they are good scouts before they are given the title as scouts. <laughs> that that. <laughs> oh, but Marisman, we, we, we have nobody to assess the scouts. Yeah, <laughs> I think the scouts <laughs> need to be scouted and assessed to see if they are supposed to actually serve in the capacity. Oh, you have answered the question. Hey. Who is gonna assess the scouts? <laughs> Who right. is assessing the scouts' his capability to make good decisions about how they select talent? You can have a mechanism in place, but it's not to be able to assess the scouts. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, and I'm saying that because because the truth is, you know, um, sometimes these things are not said in these platforms. Then then there are players who get missed, though they are scouts, which which is very unfortunate. Like, it is because of some of the dialogue. Like, I'm going to give you an example. So I did a show about why wasn't this whole thing happening simultaneously. I think, I, I think you're in the comment section. Why, when they started the one in Kingston, say in February, they didn't have it at Mount Pleasant, so they sent and, and sent where people could be there. Why were they doing it with just kids in Kingston and St. Catherine alone? I can, tell you, right. I can tell you why. I know why. Because that's Jamaica. No, Manis, man, you know this, Manis, man. They don't pass St. Catherine, man. Manis, man, you know what leader said? Indo leader tried to catch himself. 
leaders say he scouts in those areas. And he's all the only scout for our account. You talk about other scouts, but you but no other scout money, man. He's the scout. So if my scout can't drive past St. Catherine Manning's man, or you might know why not other part of the island. Or do you canvas the entire 14 parishes, Manning's man? If you're Kingston, St. Andrew, and St. Catherine are your only domain you cover. That's the problem, Manning's man. That's the problem. There you go. All right. All right. Um uh, oh, Andre is still here. So let me an answer the mark. He's not coming. The Jamaican team coach is Freddie Butler. He lives overseas. So he's coming not to scout. He's coming because players have been scouted by the scouts. So he's coming to, in the same way that he has been having these North American camps, he's coming here to have a, a camps to look at the players, not to scout them, right? Because they need to start preparing in the same way as like Ricardo Gardner working with players in England at the same time. So, so after I did that video, um, one of the organizations said they did not hear anything about this. And they have academy and all of these things operational. Nobody has reached out to them. Subsequent to that, though, several of their players have been contacted. The point I am making is this. It appears like if you don't come out and say things, some players are going to be left behind. So I'm using the opportunity to say to people that, if you know of good talent, sometimes they have to come and speak publicly about them because they may not be seen, especially the ones who are in some deep rural rural communities. I, I'll give you an example, and I'm going to say this. Javin Williams and some persons may have watched the game on Military Gunas YouTube channel for the first time. Some people have seen him play, a 17-year-old playing centre-back and was man of the match. And he's playing, and, and for the life of me, I could not understand why he wasn't given a chance to be a part of the under 20. Now they have him in this group going to Turkey. There's a next player on that said team called Roshan Graham that I've been talking about, who is also, he just turned 17. Just turned 17, playing tier two for the second season in a row. So Mannings. And he has never yet gone to any sort of training. I don't understand like no, Mannings, how these coaches um, are working. Freddie, Freddie has to work with the JFF come up with a process about how you source talent across the island, right? You can't be in everywhere doing everything because, you know, Freddie's a busy person. But he has to find another way, as you're saying, to identify those talents, which is not necessarily the most unique thing. You know, you can go find a talent if you look for it hard enough. Because yeah, if you play in tier the, two, yeah. you will see the player play, right? If you go watch enough games and you play in tier two, you're going to go watch and see him play. There's always going to be those gems that are playing in the lower leagues that you got to go look for to find to bring up to a higher yeah. level. Yeah, uh, uh, Andre, how do they who how do they get the the ta the talent from what Lavatel and thing that is close to Sport of Spain down and get the talent from Central, get the talent from Tobago to be a how 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 does Trinidad do it to to pick up the talent from all across Trinidad and Tobago? What what system okay, do what, they use? What I, what I understand. Um, at the moment is that they have an elite program and what they do, they have um, um, trials is what we call it here, um, where they would bring players in so that the coaches could look at um, and then they choose from that the players that will enter that elite program. They also, um, they also the schoolboy football is also one of the mechanisms that they they look at to find players as far as I understand. And recently I know one of the national team coaches have been going to games on a weekend to the youth games to, to look at the players, the players that is currently uh, with the group and, and to find new players. Then of course there are recommendations with from players, you know, that does not live in Trinidad. People make recommendations. People make recommendations from Tobago. I think if you're on the island, there is an opportunity. It's much easier to, to find a way into the system. If you're living outside of the island, um, there are certain windows that you need to make use of because that's the time when people be out of school or whatever the case may be for the young with kids. Um, that is how I understand the network uh, functions at the moment. Okay, so it's really similar to what they do in Jamaica. Yeah. It's, it sounds like. Okay. Yeah. 
Be because I, I think though it, it leaves so so much so many like do the teams in Tobago play in the the competition, the school competition? Yeah, yes, yes, they do. And, and they travel from Tobago to come and play the games in yes. like in Trinidad. Yeah, and teams from Trinidad go to Tobago to play games as well. Okay, okay, all right. Like I think um, it's one of the, the challenges with that. It's not really a challenge, but I, I'm sure you would agree that a scout, a scout see something different than what the coach would see, right? Um, and the ability to get them to work together and be on the same page is 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 important for the process to work. Like you, you mentioned couple of players just now that you don't know why they're not in the end of 20. Um, sometimes there's no, and I don't know, I can't speak for Jamaica. Unless there's a uniform, a uniform way of playing, a uniform way of developing players uh, throughout whatever island it might be, it, it's very difficult sometimes to see a player that's doing well in one place and knows it will trans, translate in another state. Yeah, that is I, true. A, a player may have talent, but he may not, he may be a good player, he, he, but he may not be able to give the coach what he wants as a national team coach or to play the game at a faster speed and, and, and all that stuff. So it's a very complex one to... So say, so say, Andrew, say, 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 Cranky, watch out, watch some, some, um, go, go to watch, um, a few, um, e, what is it called? E, 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 ECNL games, I think yeah, that's ECNL game, yeah. ECNL games, right? And he spots mm -hmm. two 15 year old. What would a cranky do if 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 he goes and say, Hey man, these guys look good? Say he see them, they look like African American. He say, Man, I hear you talk, I see you play. Do you have Jamaican mm -hmm. connection? The guy say, Yeah, I have a Jamaican passport, but um, never. What What does he do from there? Like, if that were someone right. from Trinidad, what would they do from there? A regular citizen? A regular citizen? Yeah. They, hopefully they would contact the Federation. They'd contact the Federation. Um, and, and say what? And, I spotted these two players? Like, like... Um, yeah. For, for me, this is what I've done before. I, I think you and I, you and I had that experience, right? You had, you had saw somebody in Florida. Yes. And, and you shared the information with me. Because I don't work for the Federation and I don't want to create the impression to anybody, what I did, I took the information and I sent an email to the head coach and copied the family of it and put them in touch. Right? Just just this morning, um, because the person knows me, they have a player there in Spain and they have a player that um, that they believe could play, that they know could play for Grenada. And he was trying to find out if I knew anybody from Grenada. Right? Um, so... I don't think there's any structured way of of exposing players uh, to the national team other than whoever you might know that might be able to get you in contact with somebody to share the player's information is is um is what people have been doing. So you know what's interesting? You know what's interesting, um um Manning. Gonna gonna as boss, we have Andre on the line here, so you have to hold on. You know what's interesting, Andre and Manning's man. Is that for countries that export a lot of human capital? I'm not sure football federation why they wouldn't have a mechanism to identify to get that information to then assess whether or not it's useful to them. Why won't you have a way for the information to be provided to you, bubbled up to you, so you can take it and assess it and say, you know what, it makes this this needs a second look, for example, right? Because you know they're going to have a lot of people from your community. Uh, who are from your lineage, who's going to be someplace overseas, someplace, and maybe doing exceptionally well, may not play one place where they were born, or they may have born in your country and migrated a long time ago. Why wouldn't you have a mechanism to get that information to you? If you really believe in sourcing yeah. talent, because Jamaica have their quota, so they may not want it, but other countries may want it because they don't have <laughs> the volume of players overseas. <laughs> Jamaica have cut off for them at I, some point. If I, was, um, if I was in charge of scouting, for example, and if we just use North America here alone, I would, I would probably try to get in contact with every club in the MLS, right? Every club in the, maybe, maybe the USA, but the MLS. M M MLS next. And, um, yeah, well, yeah. Well, once in, in the MLS, you, you would, um, 
that that that's included. Yeah, look, yeah. Um, um, and I would try to develop a relationship where they would share with me any player in the system that has an attachment to Trinidad and Tobago. Right, so that makes it really easy for you to get at those players. I see on the women's side, I see um, they have the major tournaments that they have here, the major showcases, and you see Mexican coaches walking around looking for um, for women to play for the young girls to play for the national team. So um, I would attend those as well. I don't think there's anybody right now out of Trinidad attending any of the major. There was just a major tournament, um, Generation Adidas Cup last week or two weeks ago here in the U.S. Massive tournament, all the MLS clubs, clubs come from overseas, from England and different places. And I don't think we had anybody there trying to, to scout or figure out what's taking place. I don't know if you all had anybody, but that's, a, that's an opportunity where probably um, every agent in America is there. Agents come from overseas, from Europe, all over to see the young talent. And, and it's right in our backyard and we miss it. So those are areas I think we can improve when it when it comes to finding players. Yep, yep. Uh, Andre, I, I see Gunners boss want want to call in. I'm saying that he, okay, right. you're going to keep Andre on the on, on the show. Send him the link and free up the phone, Manning's man, or get a special phone for your guest. Why you must <laughs> send me the link? Why must I send me the link? Yeah. Why Gunners yeah. boss yeah. send me the link? Why you come off? <laughs> You just, you just need call waiting. <laughs> but, but oh, I'll on the link on the next one, man. Yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> All right, I need, I need, I need to get in touch with the new TNT president. You're here to hear what his manifesto is like and thing, you know? Okay. Yes, yes. I'll, so. I'll, um, so let's see if we can. I'll try to speak and help you with that. Yes, let's see if we I'll can. Send it to you. Yeah, definitely. All right. All right. Yeah, but. Take care, brother. Thank you. All right, bless up, Andre. The ecosystem. The ecosystem is waiting on you. <laughs> <laughs> you have to wait longer. <laughs> All right, guys. You have to get yeah. out. All right. Hey, listen, Cranky, next thing I need to chat. What's happening with this? This is we, we in the middle of April, my friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pay, um, excellence doesn't come every day. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm, I'm taking my time, Manning's man. I'm taking my time. I'm taking my time. I'm taking my time. It certainly I, I'm taking... trying to enjoy my time off. I'm not rushing to take up something. When I take up something, Manning's man, I'm involved in it. If I'm going to do a channel, I'm involved, right? So okay. it doesn't make sense. Let me start the channel. I have to jump out and jump in. I have some personal stuff I work on, but I'm also in the okay. background trying to get all the stuff for the channel. But no, it's going to start um, by next month. I'm going on front, please. <laughs> Uh, good, good, good as boss. Good afternoon. Um, welcome to good I am sure a sport. Cranky. Yeah. Bless up, good as boss. Good afternoon. Good, good afternoon. Military cranky, the general, honorable respect across the world. I can spread. All military, all American soldiers are the world soldiers. They go where the trouble is on me. Big up your there. You're no, great. No, thank you. Yes, when I was missing the Andy Ellis score that goal, they are starting to eat in chess number. Right, I'm going to go to Talia Pona to me. I have the number of people that are going to ask them to you. Let me ask you a question. Yeah, man. Let me ask you a question, Frank. Which team you're supporting? I'm asking for. I'm the Knicks. Just see the same thing on that. The number two in the East, man. You're going to make me and Bill now leave. Aston Villa, he the, uh, the rest of this is now uh, coming at the playoff and come from help Jalen Branson and them man beat, beat, lose, make the Knicks lose, you know, because anybody play the Knicks, they, I guess they're not going to play them, they're going to beat, you know, again, you know, this man, if he knows, he'll support the worst team in New York yet in the NFL, he will be coming there to no, play. I support the Giants, I support the Giants, they're not much better. I support the Giants, but they're not much better, so go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> no, listen, I, I like man. when I see the man eat in chest, I say, I wonder if you know what you have to eat. I can't get it. I mean, I'm not saying with us, you know, we're not team. I just like coming here, some people in here with their fancy talking, like all the one of them 75, 20, 25, 75. Because if you're working in my place, you're not getting more than 25, 25. <laughs> now, 50, 50, you know, work around here. 
a 75 for me and 25 for you with all these fancy you come here with all these fancy words saying nothing you're an exploiter you're an exploiter you're an exploiter, <laughs> you're an exploiter. <laughs> yeah i will I, I have to you know how we go man that's how capital, capitalism works everybody gets exploited for the big dog yeah but him come over here now talking about oh we pay them too much we i i listen I see people who talk like that. Man, let the people, you know how much people them, them, them who have to pay the people them that much, leave it alone. Me not sorry to Kawhi Leonard getting a hundred and, me not sorry to um, Russell Wilson getting a hundred and twenty-five million from, from, from the Waltons who own Walmart. Peter are not playing for them and playing for Pittsburgh for a mil, one million dollar because them have to pay and so can't play for anybody else for free. You know why? They've been overpricing made in China stuff to us for years. So who cares, man? You all need to stop that about they paying too much money. We, we who? You never buy a jersey. No, no, no Gunners Boss. That's not Gunners Boss. Five dollar memorial. No, but Gunners Boss, I don't think he's hating on the players enough. Mm -hmm. He's saying when you pay them so much, you can't get rid of them. If you're trying to sell them, nobody we can who? buy them. You and I, we don't pay them nothing. We don't pay them nothing. So no, don't no. his me. team. His team. Team. <laughs> his team. Not his team. We don't have any team. That's not his team. It's nothing. We just have to support his team. We don't have nothing. Right. To right. Team support. Don't support. Don't team support. Team. Yes, say that then. Yeah, but what? But that's not what he's saying. He's saying we, we like something come out of your pocket. Let the billionaires <laughs> take that money and pay it to the poor people who never have nothing. And if it wasn't for the football and the basketball and these sports, they would still end up have nothing like me. Let them pay. And I don't care who win or who lose as long as the homies who would be in the trenches with me getting paid. I don't care. I don't care if Arsenal never win the next game in the rest of the history. As long as you are not a gunner, you are not a gunner, but Gunners, change your name. I just have M16 bars. M16 bars are back 10 bars. Okay, you say no bars. But what? What? What if? What if my name is in support of them, of the military gunners? What about that? Have you ever think about it? No, it, I, 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 it, must be, it must be military. It must be military. I can't ask now. It must be military. It okay. must be. With that said, me 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 na me me come out for the joke, you know. Cause I've been wanting to say something from you. Man, man. So, uh, so, so, so let me let me say this. So, all that you were saying before, we should just ignore, cause it was all jokes. So, you get into the real point now. No, I'm asking. No, man. Ask, no, man, I'm, no, man. I'm yeah. asking you because you said let you come off the joke thing now, and uh, you're going to say the thing that you really want to say. That's all I'm asking. Then, well, if I am saying to stand down to that, he and he is going to come and play for the team as being a mix in the first one. That's not the only argument. That's not. That's not to be controlled. Okay, 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 okay. Let okay. me just let me, yeah, man. All right, so let's get to the real. Let's get to the real thing. The real deal. Yes. Yes. Because I've been hearing you and the leader from this day, and I want to come in and come on and ask this question. Which way? I did not know that the United States soccer contributed to the youth academy across the United States of America. And they put on games, they even go as far as giving them scholarship. And when I check it out, not one of these players in the United States National Academy is of Jamaican or any other heritage. They are born American, where they might be from Jamaican heritage. But we are not, they are not taking players from Jamaica. Teenagers are high, high, high caliber players from Jamaica to put into the National Youth Academy. Why is we talking about rebuilding from R? Because it started at R9 to R9 to R9, nine U. To, to, to 19 years, right? So why can't we afford to find from under seven then to, from seven to 19 year old in Jamaica to develop to play football? We still have to look for players, players from England and America and other places to put in our youth. Our, our, our national academy should be for our local talent only. Not one play of the man overseas and come over there because better opportunity overseas for them. And I don't think a better one from overseas will be coming to Jamaica to play unless it's man like me, son, or man like Frank, son, we say, a Jamaica, we want you to play for him because whatever. And then now they get educated and then look for it and say, Daddy, I waste your waste my time now. I'm not going to go to Jamaica for me after me done to your football for them. I'm not going to go to that because they don't know me. So why not take the higher left? All right, see so what, you, what you, I want you, 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 want, you want me to answer your question? Alright, it's rhetorical. I want cranky input too. Yeah, so you don't get cranky input. Alright. 
So let's begin where you started. There are 50 states in the US, right? Right? I'm asking a question. 50 states? I know it is man. No, man, no, man. I just, can, can you answer me? Are there 50 states in the, in the US? 49 plus Hawaii and US. Hawaii, Puerto Rico, US, Virgin Islands, and California. But it's really 59. So, so, 49. so 49, 52, if you want to be. Right. Mm. All right. Put in. Put I don't know 50, but I'm okay. I'm Put right. Number. All right. So, 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 so let's let's work okay. with that. So, uh, an under seventeen team has a maximum of twenty four players. So, if the USA were to take one player from each state, they would still have excess players that would not make their under seventeen. Right, because they have. 40, 50 states, 23 players, so there are 17 left. Those 17 players that are left want to play under 17 football. Their mother or father are from Jamaica and want to play for Jamaica. They come to Jamaica to compete with the other Jamaican kids who are that age group. During those competitions, it is proven that out of the 17 of them, Four of them are better than the ones who are in Jamaica. So the Jamaica team is made up of, say, 19 of them in Jamaica and four from overseas who come and say, we want to pray for Jamaica. What is the problem with that? That is my only question. The problem with that is you, the under are built is and is to develop our national players, our players, that's what the youth teams are for in, to develop them for talent, especially for the national team, but for colleges and universities and other things as they are. We're building a pool of talent that we can go back and select from. Now, you see the, the kids now where we need to come over, if we need international exporters, if we see that team, we get some players from England who are already exposed. But if we are going to take other players from other nations, how we are in this space, where are we gonna be our players, my man? I'm speaking. I'm speaking to you. I'm speaking to you. But what we're talking about the U team, I just put to you a scenario because here's what I want to say to you. If the team is made up of 23 players in Jamaica, the development is the same. If it is made up of 12, the development is still the same. If it is made up of 10, the development is just the same. It is the one who are doing well in the developmental program that end up playing in the tournament. Playing in a tournament is separate from the process of development. That is the thing. What you are saying is that, what you are saying is that the proof of development is putting players in a tournament. It is not. I don't need to play in the tournament to develop. But as I, I am... I'm about tournaments, man. But, man, man you, I did not say that. Uh, you, you're talking about tournaments. But, talking but about that is what... Let me know when I can jump in. Let me know when no, I can jump in. You are you. You're talking about tournaments. I am talking about the development of players in our national and uh, under the U Academy. We're not talking about the senior team. The U Academy. That means we start from... No, no, we're not. We don't. Gunners boss. Gunners boss. Listen, listen, listen. Gunners boss. No player from the states is coming to play in any U17 development thing. No U8, no U9, no U10, no U11, no U12. None of that happened in Jamaica. <laughs> Nobody is coaching players for that. Nobody. What? We, listen. No, let me finish. Let me finish. And then I will. What we are doing is getting players who are Jamaicans to play in tournaments not to come into a development program. Development programs are still happening while the players are playing in the tournament. So, so I, I, I don't know. Right. Can I, can I ask? But Cranky, 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 you say you want to hear from let Cranky. So Cranky, Cranky, Cranky is going to come yeah. in. So Gunnar's boss, what question for you? One question. Go, oh, go ahead, man. Go ahead, man. Gunnar's oh, boss, can you hear me? Yes, sir, loud and clear. Are you, are you, are you kids US citizen? 
four out of my five, yes. So if they have football ability and the US have the developmental squads and they're good enough, should they be allowed to participate? In the United States? Yeah. Them born and grow, them, them American, them born in America, them in Jamaican. No Jamaican, the kids are American, then the one we're born here. And you right. don't born here, and get right. that city, you're a naturalized city. Right, so do you have one who you migrated to the US and was the citizen here, or became a citizen in the US? Two. Okay. Should, if they are young enough, should they be allowed to be part of the system? Which part of the system? The Jamaica the US, system? The US system, the same system that the, the locally born ones can be part of. Should they be allowed to be part of that system? If my son, if, if my son was born in Jamaica, then. my son was born in Jamaica, he was Jamaica. Now he when he was nine years old. Yeah. He came come to America, and he can play football. He did not play soccer. He went and, he went and played American football. But right. if he could have played, I would have encouraged him to play for Jamaica. No, but, okay, but, no, no, but he want to play for the U.S. He wants to play for the U.S. Right? He no, wants to play for the want. U.S. If he, he wants to play for the U.S., I will not think. Right, exactly. You, and you shouldn't. Right? He wants to play for the U.S. He's young enough. And so the U.S. now have its process. You think they should include him because he's not a citizen? Should he be part of that process? If he's a citizen, of course. If right. he can be included, of course he should be included. All right, so so my perspective on this, which hasn't changed from day one, is this. If if a kid is born in the U.S. of Jamaican parentage, that kid be, can become a Jamaican citizen. And I've said this 101 times, as much as I say, that kid should be for the same rights of any Jamaican citizen. Just like your kid who came from Jamaica who became a citizen are for the same rights of the U.S. citizen. Same concept. So this notion about, which I hear, oh. ad nauseum, which doesn't change. Let me finish. Donna's boss doesn't change about who born where and who develop where when they are citizens doesn't make sense to me. And I said this before when I met Sergio this at the airport and I asked him about this. He said they don't have those dialogue. He's never heard those dialogue about who born where. He is born in Holland. Luckily, Holland speak English. He probably wouldn't be. If he was born in France. He probably wouldn't speak English. He spotted the U.S. setup from a young kid, 22, 23 years old. He told me they don't have those conversations. He's never heard those conversations about whether he's U.S. or not. Because he has a Jama U.S. Um, I think dad is a U.S. passport. He plays for the U.S. They don't have those conversations. So here's my question: but, Why but are we having is, those conversations? That's a, that's a, that's a, that is a different argument. Okay, okay. No, it's the same argument. No, it's the same argument. But U.S. No, and the development. I'm about, saying holistically. Same argument. The, same country, argument. the national, the national view. Academic that start yeah. from on the night on the seven to right. on the ninety should not be a place for that is for the national for the development of the kids of the United States who are interested in soccer. Not saying they cannot go to play for Jamaica after they are developed and if they are not fit for the national squad and they are available to play for Jamaica. But I'm saying it, we know use the JFF so they go and they use the JFF money. And whatever money they earn, and they build a national academy across the island. It's not for to attract players from overseas. It's for attracting our local talent. But, but Gunas Boss, Gunas Boss, no, Gunas, Gunas, Gunas Boss. Nobody mm -hmm. has ever said Jamaica need to go overseas and get people to be a part of their national academy. Where did you hear that? Who has said that? Who, who? I just ask the question, man, is man. I just want to make it known from now that our, if we are going to have a national academy like... He said the quota like our speed up. He said the quota. He said the quota from early. He said the quota from early. No quota. No quota. No quota. What I'm saying? The quota is zero. The quota is zero. That's the quota. The quota is zero from overseas. That's the quota. The national. Gunners, boss. So you mean under. No. So so The U is under. Right? So the national and the National U Academy is supposed to be for our local. So, yeah, you know, so, so, so listen, Gunners Boss, an under 17 team is not the National Academy. So when we say, a, 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 when we say a 16 year old who is born in the United States of America of Jamaican parent or heritage can play for Jamaica under 17 team, 
We are not saying that he's going to be a part of the Jamaica National Academy. He's going to be a part of the Jamaica Under-17 team. That does not impact or affect the Under-17 Academy. Nobody has ever suggested that we need to go to England and get people to come and be a part of our U13 Academy. Nobody is saying that. That is for the kids who are in Jamaica. Nobody, right. I don't well, know where it's coming from. Let's talk about that management. It's counter to the premise and arguments we previously made, which is overseas they have better facilities, right? So why would I leave overseas to come to Jamaica if that was even allowed? Yeah, that, yeah. That was even allowed. We are so. saying that we are saying that the kids overseas should not come to Jamaica for no academy because we don't have the proper facilities. Yeah. That's what we are saying. No. They shouldn't come. Yeah. No, they should. They should come to Jamaica. They should go to Jamaica to academy. They should go to the Phoenix and the Mount Pleasant and those academies what? where they where they parent. Well, they come from Trinidad. They don't take up from Hey, pay for them to play. Listen, to me. what? Every major league baseball. Every major gonna, league baseball. Gonna, 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 no, we need to understand. No, no, uh, no. Mm -hmm. Hold on, slow down. Just slow down. Now. I'm trying to understand what you mean by a person in the States need to send their six-year-old to Jamaica to live at Mount Pleasant and pay for them to go to Mount Pleasant instead of going to the academy in Philadelphia that is next door to them. Ex explain why a parent should do that. I need to understand from you what uh, you're saying. If, if the parents choose so to, if that parents can afford it and choose to do that and want to do that, it's not, it's not a problem. <clears throat> Because, so how, did, how is that a part of our that, conversation? Well, I know because the mere fact that this academy, Phoenix and Mount Pleasant and this academy, they are private own business. They need to make money to finance what they are doing. So of course they need to get talents from all over. And just like racers track club, if Shakari will come, come train up a racer, let she come because it is in the player, it's in the coaches and the organization. That's a difference there. The kids from all across the world go to IMG, not just America, because it is an academy and an institution in Japan, which is a private country. It's not have nothing to do with the running of the government and the government system. Right. Yeah, that beep, Gunners Boss. So, so hold on, I'm going to let you finish, but we have a we have a next call coming in. So just go ahead. Come on, the other call coming. Yeah. All right. Res Thank All right. Respect, Gunners Boss. Let's let's smart, smart choice. Welcome to the show. Hey, 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 it's my normal one. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. man. Afternoon, then. Afternoon to you, to crack you. Is, do, is that Doctor? Uh, no, th this is um, Miguel. Oh, uh, oh, Miguel. Oh, Miguel. 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 <laughs> Go on, Miguel. Go on, Go on, Miguel. Go on, Miguel. Uh, <laughs> yeah, what's up, man? All right. So, <clears throat> on, a, on a, um, different note, quickly. Um, the other day, I was watching um, Oral Trace's program where Adidas had made a proposal to the J3A. Um, to the tune of over five billion dollars, I think, um, over a few years period. In that um, proposal, it also included um, funds to be allocated for um, maintenance of um, facilities and that type of thing, which um, caused me to wonder, though, um, what sort of um, agreement or what sort of um you know arrangement was made with the um the, the football federation in terms of because i think this would have been a bigger deal you know compared to what they uh, so that was a little you know mental comparison as to you know what the they would have the football federation would have gone versus what was proposed to the j3a because i think the football would have been a bigger deal and if in that, would they have gotten funds for maintenance of fields? Because, you know, and we're not seeing that either. So, you know, it makes us wonder, couldn't they, if they don't want to even give us the figure, could they at least give us some, you know, something just for transparency, you know, and to, you know, at least for integrity purpose? As to what what are some of the, the, the you know the proposed you know the agreements? I, I, I think they should. I, I think um I think they should probably give some more details that I can understand. But do you realize that when the football team got this deal, it was nowhere compared to where our track and field is at? 
Because remember, Jamaica track and field has um has the, some of the fastest women in the world. You, you understand me? Um, and other athletes. I don't think the football team was in a position to do that. Also, Puma is not a small uh, is not a small brand. So Adidas had to come in to try and give something bigger than Puma. So I'll also say that means the J3 has some leverage because now they can go to Puma and say, listen, this is what was being put on the table. So I think they're in a in a position because they were sought after because they didn't have. It's not like I don't think the football was in the same position. Like they had this big and great momentum and stuff going on. So it's probably like, listen, hey, we don't have nothing go on for you, you know. We all give us some of this and think but we are gonna control this. And you don't have nothing, you say, boy, yeah. But at some point you can go back to the table when they start having some success. So that is how I see it. I feel like track and field has greater leverage in negotiation than football at this present moment that may change um but i don't and, and then they have the olympics and all of those things with shelly and and, and um elaine and um you know you have all of these young athletes coming through you have the the long jumper guy um oh geez from kingston college you forgot his name hebert hebert um you understand me you, you, you have you have Shelly Ann, you, you, you understand me? You have you and Blake, one of the second fast. So you have you have oblique civil, you have you have the uh, Akeem Blake. So I think they have a lot more leverage. You have all the, the sprint hurdlers, you have the handsome <laughs> parchment. So I think like Jamaica is in a track and field is in a better place to negotiate and turn down even things more so than the football. So maybe so, that so is like, so I don't know, maybe Cranky so can hold on. Go ahead. I think Miguel is asking a good question, but it needs much more deeper and further analysis. What do I mean by that? So a number of things. Why now? That's my first question. I know the Puma contracts will be expiring end of this year, is my understanding. Even though the head of JTA didn't want to talk about it when he was being interviewed. But why now versus all the time when both was at his zenith, I'm sure the contracts got renewed then, why weren't you pursuing Jamaica then? And here's my philosophy on that, my view on that, which is there's more to this than meet the eye. Right? And I think the soccer team has something to do with it. They probably realize how big the brand is, how much they exactly. make up the brand with Arsenal, with the women's team, with the men's team, with our popular Jamaica. They realize how huge this is. And the Olympics coming up and further events in track and field, the continuous talent we produce, just seem to suggest that there's a lot of money to be made. I'm always suspicious of people when they've seen you for a long time, all of a sudden they want to be your friend. And you're like, well, why you want to be my friend now? So my question is, if I was Why a JP, no? not that, that. How you come up with your number? Do you want to give me? How you calculate a number? Because your number is based on what you think you can generate, and you want to make sure you give me less than that so you can generate your profit. How you generate that number? Got to be some way. They pull out of a hat. That the billion sound enough money in this band, but unless they're making five to six times more, they're not giving you that billion. Those billions. So do I take that deal, or do I take more of an equity type construct deal, which is I get X Y Z for merchandise you sell? Whereas you give me some money for infrastructure, money for X, Y, Z. Do I take risk with that money or do I set before a combination of fixed payments plus some variability I, I, to it? I, I, you know what? The other, you know what? The two most powerful track nations in terms of sprinting in the world are not Adidas. USA is Nike. Jamaica is Puma. Yeah. So in track and field, Nike and, and Puma outperforming them. In, in this region. Yeah, you because, ask the question, why, why do you want to give me, an, why are you coming to me now? Yeah. We had an Olympics in 2018. We had an Olympics in 2014. We were great at the 2012 Olympics. Well, actually, 2016, not 2014. 2012, we were great yeah, with we're, both we're, and Blake yeah. and Weir. Why are you coming to me now versus, is it because you've learned from the soccer association that there's money to be made and you're trying to be sure you're in the front line making that money? Yeah, well, currently, like in every business, one is gonna try and exploit any form of, um, you know, advantage, any form of situation that they can in order to um, to make a profit. It may seem, from a moral perspective, it may seem like you know um, a bit out, but from a business perspective, I guess that's how it works. You know, certainly. Um, I think Jamaica you know, should build but, their own brand and sell their own merchandise. Uh, yeah, because I think anything. Yeah. And listen, listen, remember, I know, 
the Puma, just the ad that the Puma people did with the Jamaican gears went global. You yeah. think Adidas don't look at that and say, listen, our ads would be way, 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 way. And it's not only selling Jamaican man. you're selling Adidas merchandise. So it's not just selling Jamaican, you're selling Adidas name is one that's getting advertised. That brand is being exported and that brand is much broader than Jamaican merchandise. Yeah. So I, 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 I think the yeah. J3 can now go even back to Puma. Like, oh, like they, they probably will. They probably will. Yeah, and I also think like the JFF is is getting leveraged by some of these things. Well, the question is when does JFF contract yeah, expire with, with Adidas? That's a question. Somebody is saying that they have been we, trying. Ernest is saying that they have been trying. Oh, sorry. Ernest is saying that they have been trying to get in on the act. However, the J three didn't want to break with Puma. Why? Because no, you know, yeah. I mean, let me not let me not say it. Bolt, because Bolt Bolt was not going to give up on his Puma thing, you know, whatever that was. Oh, uh, okay. So, so I now don't they can know. break. So now they can break with them. <laughs> I assume we have no longer <laughs> Bolt. They can break with them. I assume. Because my management, there's a lot of yeah, backroom well. deals in a management that that doesn't come to the forefront, you know, that allows these contracts to materialize. You know. Something they're backroom deals, management. It's not what is front of you seen. You know. It's what behind you don't see. Oh yeah, yeah, that's true. I believe that. Okay, that is true. Especially well, in one, one thing. True. One thing I will say is this: that if if one of these guys can build a stadium in the country and call it the Adidas Stadium or the Puma Stadium with track and and a, and a good money, surface, money, man, that's real money. That's real money, man. It's like real money now. That, 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 <laughs> listen. So I think this is the leverage. What I think should happen is that maybe the J three A's and the JFF and the netball come, team come, come together. should come mm -hmm. together. Yeah, and really approach good. one of these companies because no that mm -hmm. and even that, that make that no no that's not gonna, it makes too much sense to do that it makes too much sense <laughs> <laughs> make it too much sense <laughs> to leverage to leverage the individual and the collective it's too much sense to do that so don't don't think about that too much so sense. just imagine just but seriously cranky just imagine if well, that, and, that's and they can be, build a multi with you have a net you have your netball <laughs> courts you have the track mm -hmm. area and you have the football and it's called a puma mm -hmm. complex or the adidas complex i think mm -hmm. that kind of branding would be significant for any one of those companies mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and 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 also for the three the three major sports and you can like i said netball track and field and football we are ranked in the top four in the world in netball in sprinting in track and field, I am sure that Jamaica mm -hmm. is, is right in the top three for the last probably 15, 16 years. In the, yeah, in and they would not only get revenue from the products, but also the usage of the facility. They could get a percentage of that also. So, you know, but that's a good idea. But we'll go on this thing still, but I'm just there, you know, throw that out. I think the JFF needs so, to. So, Miguel, they can't. No, 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 Miguel, nobody run thing. You make a comment in that comment section. Well, I'm fine, you know. <laughs> Why is it a comment section, Miguel? Well, you know, Mr. Pick up every comment. Where is it? Where is it? Which of the which of the comments, Cranky? Which of which of the comments? <laughs> I don't remember yeah, which man, one it was, yeah. but I responded to it. I'm oh, trying to man, find man. it. Never heard, man. Some, I don't know. I've never seen. I've never seen. No, but you, 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 you mean the comment? What you mean? Are you right? Man, I have these three comments. <laughs> which one did you make concerning did you either Arsenal or Cranky? Huh? Oh, yeah. the one that I said, uh, Bill can't do anything right. <laughs> yeah, no, that's look, the one. Big game, big game. I said this, you are going to pass because I definitely put. I mean, I mean, I dislike Bailey, you know. What I dislike I know, I know is that. Bailey's lack of production for Jamaica. That's what I dislike. I want Bailey to do well. I've said this all the time. I want Bailey to do, I want Bailey to score tons of goals, not against Arsenal, but tons of goals. You see, in the that's, what, that's my point. I don't want to score against Arsenal. No, no, because you know, me, I'll get grief about that, right? I'm gonna stop get grief. I just question let me say, you know what? I can see the grief coming. I can see the grief coming. But no, yeah. he scored a good goal. It was a tapping goal. I don't think he had a great game, mm -hmm. but he scored a good goal. So and we lost because of that goal mainly. So oh, yeah, because that gave them the momentum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That gave them you know. this is crazy. Like <laughs> like after this whole thing, I see some comments about JFF and Jimmy. like I'm thinking like how a goal against Arsenal in the EPL has to do with who need like this thing like I don't understand like people are so crazy like how does the conversation get into who need who like, yeah I don't I don't think like, I, I don't, don't understand man, I don't think anybody man, needs anybody but, but, there's a there's uh, difference between need and want you know I mean want you but I don't need you I don't think either party needs each other 
Yeah, but I'm saying that this is a goal against Aston Villa and the EPL that has nothing to do with. Like, I think with Jamaica football, so you know, you shouldn't send it, but it is what it is, man. Uh, um, but the thing about it, though, as far I don't think we can't say we miss a lot where Bailey's concerned, even though because he has been. What, what do you say? So we, 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 we miss a lot, like miss, or are, are you mean like miss, like. <laughs> The person is doing like, oh, oh, oh. this in terms of in terms of um losing out on his ability. That, oh, that's oh, oh I thought you talk like miss you know, opportunities, so you know? No, 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 no. <laughs> but in terms of um, I don't think we, it's not like we, we have lost a lot for based on his performance for Jamaica because he has been performing to our um, Aston Villa for a while now. And subsequent to, to, to his performances for Aston Villa, he hasn't been performing for JA. So it's not like we have a guarantee that now he's in a top form, he's gonna he's gonna come and um you know do do the same thing for us because we have been seeing that. So well, um can, my can, you imagine, is, uh, can you imagine can you imagine <laughs> if Hargrimson bench a certain player and they come on and score, what would happen in the Jamaican community? They would have lost their mind about the coach in the way, Mado. Right? We're not here to see yeah. a narrative expound by in this community about that yesterday. Player get Benja come on and score. We're not here to blast Emery in the way, Mado. And why the player never start. And how Emery not good and all and something. If Hargrimson does that, he would have been castigated. Mm-hmm. So we are very well, nice in the way we think and operate. Yeah. At one point, Bailey was coming on the, in the for Aston in the second half, too. So maybe it's because they get used to that sometimes. Sometimes it starts, sometimes it comes out in the second half. No, the players played better so than the maybe. Abbey. That's not disputable. The players have been better than the Abbey. And that's his competition. He's been better mm-hmm. than the Abbey. That's not even debatable. The Abbey started yeah. like a house on fire, and he's watered down since then. So <laughs> that's not even debatable. So, so, listen, this is what I'm like, I don't want. Big up yourself, Miguel, because it's we have yeah, the three-hour mark, so that's a couple of minutes. And something uh, I want to think yeah. about, Cranky, you don't have to respond, right? Is the World Cup qualifiers more important than the Copa America, right? Th- that's and, not a question, man. It's a rhetorical question. Uh, all right. If so, if the World Cup qualifiers are more important, and a player, um, you know, opts to miss your World Cup qualifiers, for evident reason, which he has categorically stated, um, would you then call him for the Copa? Um, like, that, that is my like. If, if the world, it's, it's a good question. It's a fair question. It's not a rush decision. To me, it's a question between the JFF. It's not just the coach, the JFF, and the coach. And the reason why the JFF got a player casket the JFF in public domain, they have to have an input. But the player should be selected for the team or not. No, yeah, I the the alone. Yeah. Yeah. So I would think, look, if that was me, you don't want to ask me that question. <laughs> but if I was a rational person, no, yeah. I'm going to take disrespect, man. I'm going to take disrespect. So yeah, people, get disrespect, listen, I'm going to take disrespect. People, crank, 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 crank. <laughs> disrespect. <laughs> so if I'm me at a coach, play a camp on my team, period. May I tell you that right yeah. now? Unless I apologize publicly. And it still gets suspended. Yeah. You, you know, I don't, I don't like the public apology business. No, no, it has to, ha- no, no, it has to happen. If you cast no, me in public, I, I, no, no, really, man, this, is man, this is man's man. Yeah, because you're giving I me a pass we don't deserve. If you put me in public and and then if you, and tell me, see me a lie in public, man, man, you call me a lie in public. If you call yeah. me a lie in public, I mean, bring you back. Let me look soft. Me not look like me in control. Yeah, so what, I'm, what, not saying, what I'm not player, saying what that. Of players, think of, what, what do other players? No, I am thing? not saying that there should not be an apology, but I don't feel like. Like you always says somebody has to be the adult in the room. Yes, and that's what right. I was going to so gonna it, say. You know what? You can't <laughs> play unless you 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 did it. X Y Z. Yeah, but I'm saying if you did something in the public that I think is wrong, why should I? Right. Um, make it why right to the public. Demand a public apology. No, no. Why, make why, it right to the No, no. Man is man. It's all about the, if you did it behind the scenes. I wouldn't have to have you go in the, out in the public and talk about this. You came up publicly and called me a liar. You came up publicly and denigrated JFF. You came up publicly and put your coach in a bad situation. And I should just take you back, Manning's man, without you having any repercussions? Then you should not be the coach for a national team. All right. You okay. should not. So, so, 
the, the, because whatever stance we take, you know. So if there are other players who says, listen, it's Dominica Republic, and, and I'm not going to play against Dominica Republic, or I am not going in, I'm not going to Windsor Park in Dominica to play. All right. Yeah, that's right. That's be, nice man. You can't be if you're Antonio, you give an excuse. Doesn't suffice because that is the world. You, you better be injured. You better be injured. All right. So that's what I'm asking. So if the if a player opts to do that, should they then um go and play in? I will tell the... you, the World, Cup, the World Cup is not for you. The World okay. Cup 2026 is not for you. I'm sorry, but it's not for you. You cannot come in my team. If your excuse is that you're tired. The only excuse is if you're injured, married man. Are you a plan to get married and the wedding date set and you can't change it? And even then, may tell your wife, push back a day. If I dare me, me from you. No, man, man, that can't work. I woke up quite man, man. You got a chance to go to the World Cup. Why should others go sacrifice on your behalf when you are available? That's not fair to them. And how should those players think, man, man, the other players, the Blakes, the Lowe's, the Pinocks, how should they think? That's not fair. Yeah. The um Rob Smith, I think Rob Smith is of the opinion that Bailey should be re-included because then he's asking Bailey Kadamarty accepted your call up and then went and played 10 minutes for under 19. Um, should he be allowed man back? Man, a whole, man is man, man is that's man. a different thing though. Why are we conflating things? Yeah, yeah, that's different. If Kadamari come out to the public domain and he's by the way, he's 18, castigate the JFF, castigate the coach, this the whole country. This the whole country, this the whole country, you know, can't do nothing for me. And then you guys are making excuses. And first of all, Manning's man, here's how this normally works. If you are playing like a bunny shopping for Man City, and you come for Jamaica, you're damn dead, like he does in this region, that in the World Cup, even then, Manning's man, I probably wouldn't give you a bly, but you probably deserve more of a bly. You haven't done any of your national team to warrant you getting special treatment. Let me repeat that. I don't care what you do at any other club, our club football. We talk about national football, national team national prominence you haven't done any of your national team that's better than anybody else on the team period so where do you get this privilege that's supposed to be bestowed upon you because of your contribution and even then i probably wouldn't give it to you because if it was antonio it'd be the same thing in fact not even antonio is not a good example it was great the same thing because antonio hasn't done a ton for the national team performance wise even though he's been a good player score great goals have been a great goal scorer Gray is a perfect example. If Gray do the same thing what the player do, Gray can't play for my team. Yeah, yeah Rob. Gray has been Rob, on the Rob, yeah. the tournament. Can't yeah, Rob. I, I think, uh, Rob, I think you're going down a path that you're not going to win. Because you're asking, I would still recruit after we qualify for the World Cup. Because there may be a position that we need to plug. Man is man. Player... No, no doors have a shut. Man is man. You don't shut doors. You don't shut doors. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That. You don't shut doors. I mean, England don't so shut doors. Right Brazil don't shut doors. You don't shut doors, man is man. Um, I don't know, but you could have a top talent that just they, they broke out in the latter stages of the qualifiers. It's a very you can't just say no, I am not going to recruit. But you again, you may have one or two spaces that you need to plug because some players may get to that stage and they are too old, they have lost form. So big someone up, asked the question, man is man. Big up Sterling. <laughs> if, if, if the player, if the player did this behind the scenes, and it's because they had a party, isn't that what whisper did? Then whisper up a party and say, not taking the national dollar. I mean, we don't need to make up make up a story. That's what happened, right? Listen, I don't even like to talk about it because well, man, you, man, you that happened. What? I'm not saying to talk about it, but I'm saying it happened. No, no, man, no, man. I agree to you, but I'm saying that it's so. Um, I wish uh, we don't get caught because people are lose their mind, like the player in a distant country. And there's only one theme to those players, which you guys seem to miss. No, or the ones who, me, the ones no. are you who are put your head in the sand, don't want to admit it. No, I'm um, Rob. Nobody is saying that the door is shut. Cranky did not say. It. To be fair to Cranky, he didn't say the door is shut on Bailey. He's saying that he should apologize publicly. That's what he said, Rob. He has to. That's what he Rob, said. You know, he Rob, just Rob, yeah. Rob, that's Rob, what he's man. Hear them little people talking about Jimmy. You know, some look a fraud. You know, not fraud. Rob Smith, I love not fraud. You know, not fraud because the player said nothing bad about Villa and run go apologize to Villa. And the player this same country and apologize and the CM hypocrite like you know, I run off on the mouth. You know, inside Jamaica, go away. I'm telling them, go away. I don't have to go away. Hypocrite. I don't know, hypocrite. It is annoying to hear this nonsense. So because you support the player, the player this same country, don't this same in the same club now. 
But the part has been clubbed because what you say could have been misconstrued. None of you are beating the player because of that. People like you, Rob Smith, are not fraud. Are not supporting on Jamaica, are not fraud. I don't say no banner Jamaica. Because bar they go with certain privileges. Nonsense. I don't have fraud. Go ahead. <laughs> fraud. <laughs> People, that's what's coming up on Cranky Live. Look out for the new channel. He's just showing maybe, restraint because maybe he's last a day. Maybe we last a day, man. Is man. If, it, if you're lucky. Pierre Fraud, <laughs> man, is man. This is my last point. Let me just get this up. Man. Man, is man. This is not about the player, Manning's man. The player is a very good player. The player doesn't accept your welfare. He is his family. But the player will not talk about. Just like we think the Bonnie Shard, this is the country too. See him with you. Yeah, Bonnie Shah, no one come back and apologize. You she was wrong. I come on national TV. See certain things. If you see certain things, you're wrong. You know, see you're wrong. I move on. The player apologized. The worst thing that apologized to Villa. And I said nothing bad about Villa. And the player said, you know what? Anybody want to play if you have a big six club? Which is a fuck. They might big four now, but fuck. And the player run go apologize. The player said, Jamaica can't do nothing for him. I ain't put Jamaica on the map, basically, in my words. Yeah, and but like Rob Smith. He's like Rob Smith. I run off them mode, like. Company thing, Rob Smith and talk. I run off on the moat. I know. I don't know. Get this. Me not take this, Rob Smith. Sorry, me not take this. No, Rob Smith. This. Listen, what what I say is though, like this is real now. So I agree with Cranky. You know that there needs to be some sort of conversation and apology. My issue is that it should not be a demand that the person apologize publicly. Man is man. You're not question. You're man. You just take the player back. You just take him back. I say come back. No, no. Welcome. I am saying that we love you. Apologize. I am saying that the should apologize to who. I, Eh? For, because he should have I mean he and the confederation let me tell you let me tell you I think that I would say okay in this case you need to sit and talk to your team and apologize to them your coach and the federation and that's in a private setting no after that a statement can come out but I don't think the player should come out and say listen hey you see them things I'm missing for example Mr. Sorry, about it. Is a statement eh? the coach and the player was suspended and the player said no I'm me suspended no Manning's man, then it, the narrative comes from two different quarters, and it's two different stories we're getting. And both parties seem like liars, Manning's man. No party seem like they have their act together. Right, Manning's man? Yeah. The player come out and apologize, then the player can't retract nothing and say, me never apologize, can we even apologize? We, we, are, we are walking eggshells, and we're talking around stuff, and we don't address things directly. And I'm sorry, I understand the implication of public apology. But if you're wrong, that's what real men do. They apologize when they're wrong. And when they're right, we law them. And when they do well, we law them. And all you guys keep talking about cranky hate the player. No, I hate certain people's behavior. And I and I and I I don't even hate behavior. I don't like when certain people do certain things and they don't pay the penalty for it. And last but not least, if you're not producing, then I can't tell you you're producing. I'm sorry. So, so all right. So who did the player? Because I believe Leon, when he went back to Villa, he would have had a conversation with the people at Villa. The man at came out with public, publicly apologize what he mean asked the man is not. No, did he publicly apologize? Yes. <laughs> Go read uh, it. <laughs> publicly apologize. So I think like it's a conversation. Listen, coach. Like, yo, coach, you know that, I mean, really, if what I said offended you, I'm sorry, that was not my intent, but I was just frustrated. All right, bam. All right, team uh, team on a Zoom, bam. You know that, listen, if you guys are offended by what I said, you know, that was not my intent, bam, I'm sorry. You understand me? Then the captain can come out and said we had a conversation about that, and the coach said, we had a conversation about that, and we are moving forward. You understand me? And then same thing, but like this idea of of asking the players to come out publicly because if what what would happen is that if if what if what if what he said is right and everybody else is wrong, will those people come out and apologize? Man is man, man is man. man, is man. man is no. This was the same player who, when he missed a goal for Villa, <laughs> cried and apologized to the Villa fans. Right, man is man. May I read yeah. it right now on Sports Max? May I read it now because Sports Max, I'm doing my right. So, that people like Rob Smith once said. So the player who keep apologizing to the Villa, apologized when he missed goal, was so apologized that he shed tears when he missed a goal for Villa, you know. When the player that shed tears and missed goal for Jamaica, I apologize to Jamaica saying he missed goal. Except they said they feel bad. I'm too hurt him. I'm injured. People don't stop the nonsense, man. Don't stop the nonsense. I mean, you know, this is the worst thing about this man is, man. I'm not going to talk about the player, you know. 
I'll be back on the rap smith, Miguel and Rap Smith. I want to start me up now. Don't start me up. Leave me alone. <laughs> me know I want to talk about the player. The player do well in school against my team. Kudos, happy theme. Or we make enough money for the new contract him sign. Or we keep on scoring goal. Me know I want to talk about the player. Because right now, people not play for Jamaica. I'm going to talk about people who not play for Jamaica. It's not part of the Jamaica team. All right? Bless. All right. <laughs> Stay tuned, people. You'll get more when Cranky starts his live. Yeah, yeah. You understand me? They, they call it undiluted, unapologetic truth. Yes, yes, Smashing. Yes. You understand me? Disturbing to some of you who have low tolerance levels when he begin to speak. Look out for it. <laughs> this man said we need to write it and read it and be out. <laughs> <laughs> R R, yeah, you really tell me if you're a clone. How me if you're gonna write something and a player's behalf and say we apologize on behalf of the player? Come on, what can what can well, I want? I, I, I said this before, right? The player, the coach, and JFF had to figure out how they want to handle this. Don't listen to Cranky because me have a different way of handling things. Me, you know, if you make sure, say if me wrong, me apologize, and if you wrong, you have to apologize. And if you embarrass me in the public, you have to embarrass yourself back in the public because you're wrong. I saw me see you embarrass me in public. You have to take the CM. You have to take the, the ammunition that comes with it, and the fire that comes with it, and I, I, I don't, I don't agree. I, like, like if my son did something at school to embarrass me, I'm not no, going no, to. No, 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 no. Your son didn't inter do anything, anything intentionally embarrass him. You may feel the embarrassment from it. They didn't go out and say, "I'm embarrassed, my dad. I'm going to do this." They didn't say, "Daddy is terrible. Yeah. Daddy treat me poorly. Daddy don't buy me plane ticket. Daddy put me in a bed with enough people. Daddy do they, the club. Your, your son." Never said that, Manning's man. This was deliberate on your son's. You're saying your son deliberately embarrassed you. And went to school and said, My daddy not giving no food. Now nah, feed me. Yeah. Never come to school with a tear of pants. That's what you're saying now. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so my son goes to school and tell lies, right? That, that, I, I mean, the whole school here. I walk up at school and I see the embarrassment. I'm not. No, I'm no, no, no. Go... Tell lies about you. <laughs> That's the question. Difference in the Manning's man. And yeah. first of all, management, if my son goes to tell him, he can't come home, management. He better just find him to go stay. He can't come home. He can't come home. Oh, he can't come home, management. He can't come home. Sorry. Can't... What? Most Jamaican parents, I know, management. If that happened, go find somebody to go sleep here. And then, in fact, I don't know what will happen to you. <clears throat> Not a good example. Not a good example. No, can't. All right. All right, people, listen. We are going to... We are going to... <laughs> Uh, we are going to leave it there uh, today. I want to thank all of you, San Cranky and Andre and um, all, all, all the other persons um, for once. <laughs> no. For once. Really? Mr. Hey, Kama. Henry, you agree no, with no, Mr. Henry, Henry, you missed that Henry, Henry. For once, pause. You missed that comma. That's not good because I, I know how intelligent you are. That's not good. Don't, don't, you, don't you really agree with Cranky and this one that it should be a public apology? I, 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 I don't believe you. I, be, I trust A. Henry because she never agrees with me, so I don't trust her. I think she's right. <laughs> a. Henry, yeah. A. Henry, I think you're right on that one because I don't know how you... Manage, how manage, I want to hear your point. What's the other spot? How would you rectify this, Manning's man? Uh, if, I mean, if I'm in a position, I'd sit to the player and say, listen, there has been far-reaching implications um, for those words said. And listen, I think you have the you are the best person to fix this <clears throat> right you're the best person to fix this whatever the court says your teammate says the federation says your agent says the, the management of the team says will not fix this you have to fix this all right and you have to fix this and i think you need to have some conversations like i'm saying that have a conversation with the coach because even though you're frustrated listen and find out if what you said and how you did it has caused any offense to talk to him and also to talk to your team. And then from there on in, you can probably see the reaction and implication. And maybe you will need to, to put out something publicly that people can understand the meaning. But you hey, need to have a conversation with those persons. Maybe. maybe. Yeah, because because what if what if he speaks to those to those groups privately and they and they accept him? He may not need to come out publicly and say anything. Man is man, you know the worst thing about all of this? <laughs> you know the worst thing about all of these people? You know, listen to this. You know how the player got into this position? Because it was a habitual curfew breaker, Manning's man. Man is man, this is amazing, you know, Manning's man. 
I am do something wrong. I'm totally wrong. I admit I'm wrong. You come with all them things that would not mean nothing to the situation at hand to camouflage my thing. And in doing so, we just diss everybody around me or involved with the organization, man. Can be wrong in the man, man. Be wrong in the man. I'm wrong now. But me change say I'm me wrong. Because the circumstances make me wrong, even though me do something deliberately. It's amazing, man. In, and we are allowing that to happen. Yeah. Jesus. But I'll say, people, we're going to do a show about the Knicks. The one thing I'll say about the Knicks, RR, is that Randall, <laughs> Randall is out. He did surgery. So I think he's not going to be available for the playoffs. Um, yeah, we made a mistake, Manning's man. Should have traded some, him. No, 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 no. Randall's a good player, but he makes a lot of mistakes. But some people say we're better off without him. I don't think so. The mistake we made was yesterday, there's no way we should have won that game. None. None. You don't think we can beat MB and Philly? Well, we struggled with Miami, and Philadelphia is 31 and 8 with MB in the lineup. And they won about six, seven straight with him come back. In by one leg, Manning's man. But we beat, we beat them. We beat them you with Philly Mannings, man, but this is a seven game series where you have rest between days. It's a different game. Right? They're gonna feed him and feed him and feed him. And Max is playing much better. There are people like they have a few people around them who are decent players. I think we should take a chance with Indiana, who have played us tough too. But in the first round, Philadelphia with Embiid and Maxi, tough acts, man. Is, man. So, just, so, you know, you know so, what so, Cleveland so, though? Man, you know what Cleveland though? They make sure they lose and so they have the fourth spot so we can't get one goal against Orlando and play Orlando. That team they know they can't beat. They know they can't manage no other team. So they lose on purpose. So what do though? Lose on purpose, we avoid Philly. I, I I think I think Branson there's Maxi can't guard Branson and I think he's going to put MB in full trouble. Nobody can guard Maxi. We can't but, we can't use Onobi on ten player, right? OG can guard ten players. No, but one. I think I think you have a lot of fouls to give up with Robinson and uh, um and MB uh, should about eighty percent. MB Harris Harris and right. I think those two. Robinson uh, and Harkinson. And Sims is about twelve, about eighteen fouls. Yes, Manning's man. But, but Embiid shoots the ball free throws at a high rate, Manning's man. High rate. But who, who, who is going to guard? You are gonna go into this... foul trouble early in this in the hey, half? Hey, Guaranteed right, two but, points. Hey, cranky. Philadelphia backcourt defensively is poor, you know. Yes, we have. He's brilliant. Max is oh, brilliant. Defensively, Philadelphia. No, no, no offensively, I'm talking. About. I'm yeah, but then defensively, Branson, Branson and and, and Divesenko, his name and Hart, it's 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 a very the Knicks have a very solid, solid backcourt. Man is man, yeah, you keep using that word solid, you know. It's not a good word, you know. We need to talk about basketball you know, and try to win you know. Exceptional, excellent, right? Those are words you want to use. If you say because solid is regular in the NBA, the man is man. We have a chance, but I'd rather play Indiana than play Philly, frankly. And Miami's always tough for us. Miami beat us last year, and they played us well this year. So. I, I don't even know, because the playing, right? The playing won't affect who the Knicks play. No, it will. It could be Philly or Miami. It will. If Philly lose so, to Miami, right? And then when yeah. the next game, then they play Boston. And we would play Miami. Oh, so we either have right, so we either have Miami or Philly, two tough teams. Miami or Philly, yeah, 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 right. yeah. So yeah we finished yeah. third, would have played, would have played um Indiana. Okay, that's tough. That's tough to play. Anybody's tough, but Philly's a difficult team. I, I would rather, I would rather us play Philly than Miami. Pick your poison. <laughs> I'm telling you, I am telling you. I'm telling you, but this man, we'll... this man, extrapolate Philly number. They're 31 and 8 when MB played. So extrapolate to 62 and 16 when MB played. Even though that's not 82 games, man, man. You can see the record. One of the best, the best in the NBA right now when MB played, extrapolated is the best in the NBA. So what, what, I'm, what, what I'm saying to a cranky is that Branson. Is listen, people underrate Branson, you know. Jalen no, no, Branson, he's been brilliant, he's been brilliant. But man, man, he can't do it alone, you know. Because when he's off the court, what happens? I'm telling you, he's been playing well. Yeah, but we remember struggle. he was. God, we struggle, we struggle, we struggle. All right, let's see. Even let's see. is a hot and cold player. Hot hey, and let's cold. see. And, 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 and think that um, OG's back. And, and OG, is, OG is the person. OG is the person. 
Because uh, OG's defense is ridiculous. So OG's the person. And Bogdanovich is a good shooter. Listen, people, hey, we're gonna have a different show for the NBA. You understand me? Yeah. <laughs> All right, now I say Bucks first, oh, first, first round. So, so R and R, you think we're gonna be in the first round to the Knicks? Lakers are first round. If they played if they play Denver, yes, they're gonna be our first round. No matter who the Lakers play, no matter who the Lakers play, them going out first round. It's not the Lakers alone, man. You don't know because yes, they'll go out first round. But you're talking about Denver, OKC, Minnesota. But then you have below them, you have Phoenix, for example. You have Lakers. The tough teams are in this six, seven, and eight slots. Pelicans are a good team. If they play Minnesota, they can beat them. Play OKC, okay, they can beat them. So it's going to be interesting, man. What are the most hey, interesting CC, players? CC, CC, afternoon. Is end the show ending on CC? We just start... Oh, yeah, that's why, that's why he called. <laughs> 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 so, CC, we have got that. Next time we are going to do the basketball show, we're going to do it in the evening. And we are going to send you the link. You understand me? Yeah, so, come here, basketball, man. I'm check a start. It's a start now. Yeah, yeah. We, 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 yeah, we think, say, we think say, that would be good for you because you have not been doing discussing, well, doing discussing football. So maybe we should try a different sport. I agree. We're going to do... We're going to... <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, the better than yeah, the better than one team you must not do. How Chelsea must wow, be? Wow. How Chelsea must be in the bottom half of the table and the better than Arsenal with the second? Are you serious? They must be winning you're, today. Then you're leading the bottom half of the table and I'm in second. No, they have two nothing against Everton. That's why they have two nothing. I should have known that. They have two nothing. Oh, Palmer, so. Palmer scored two. Must be. And no penalty? Wow, well, Palmer is having a sensational CC. All right, so CC, maybe let you know and then I'll send you the link, all right? Yeah, man, no problem. All right. Yeah, all cool, right. cool. Let's go, Mannings. Later. Yeah, man. All right, Cranky. All right, so people, there you go. Um, That is it. We're going to do a basketball show separate. Thanks to every single one of you, please. Um, I know some of you have not done this yet because we have 86 likes, right? So we need 14 more before we get to 100. So make sure you hit the like button before you go. I am Management. This has been I Am Sure Sports. Thanks to all the person who subscribed to the channel. For the first time, it's a pleasure having you. I'm subscribing to the platform. Really, really pleasure. We appreciate that. The show is over um, right now. You understand me? So, um, yeah, big up, big up, big up, big up, big up on yourself. Every single one of you. Um, have a blessed day. Stay safe until we meet again. To all the moderators, the subscribers, and the person who gave super sticker, super chat, those who like and share the video. Thank you so, so much. I am Manningsman. This has been I Am Sure Sports. And as usual, when it gets to this point of the show, we say we are over and we are O U T. Out of here. Yo, what's up, dog? SK New Artists. The body out there. Sniper King I represent for I Am Sure Sports. You get to me, I say? When you want the latest news and sports and updates and all of that, check out I Am Sure Sports. You know the thing goes in. Member, you cover the whole island. Member, Kingston, Westmoreland, Galchester, Ocherius, Galtigo Bay. Everywhere. I Am Sure Sports. Check it out for the latest news and latest updates. Sniper King I represent. Where them feel like. Ha, yeah, some known for the food from young from with the yani height. I am sure sports. Yeah, dog. <laughs>